have to add more cameras to the scene. I don't know what audio is getting through. I think the speakers are a little too loud. Hold on. I got to turn them down. Otherwise, you guys get double. That should probably help. I had it turned up for headphones. Turned up for headphones. I don't need to turn anything else on. Okay. All right. I see. I see how it is. Should probably put the old board down below the new board, or at least do this. Let's put the controller up against it a little bit without damaging it. Yeah. At least a slightly more dynamic picture on the uh, the burn the subs cam than a block of wood on my wall. It's gonna be like that until we finish this part. I need to figure out like a fluid mount arm for this camera if I'm going to be using this for the next couple of years. Something that I don't have to lock down because uh, it would make for a better shot if I could just move it around locally. Man, I, I am out of it today. I don't know what's up with me. I don't think I'm getting sick. I think I'm just... It's, I mean, it's garbage day, so I probably had very interrupted sleep. Garbage day? No, wait. <laughs> Alright, anyway. <laughs> that movie. Was it like Halloween or the, the Halloween night or something like that, too? But everybody just knows it is garbage day because of the pre-internet viral clip from it. Good movie. Good movie. Terrible. It's an absolutely horrible movie. But Schadenfreude, being what it is, Schadenfreude. All right, I'm just cleaning up the desk a little bit here. We got to do a lot of measuring today. A lot of measuring and a lot of little layout things. A lot of little fiddly layout things. So. It's basically just a continuation of what I've been working on all week. What a pain. What a pain. What a pain. What a world. Engineering is work. Work. Gotta do work. Pretty much everything else on the desk is trash. The laser. Which I'm, I'm actually thinking about using a new laser. Thing. Yeah, we need to move start soon. Yeah, it didn't work. Uh, the this, this circuit doesn't work. I don't know why. I need to. We need to go into the oscilloscope phase with it, and I think maybe we'll do that on Friday. Maybe if that's going to be because troubleshooting is a lot more interesting than building the circuit. So, all right, overlays, unlock it, go to start soon, click on it, and then try to move it, and it doesn't move. Here, look. I'll show you guys. You can't, I mean, the, the name is literally in the URL. All right, anyway. <laughs> That's going to be a bit of a confusing view here. I can't click on it. It won't let me click on the start soon thing. If I go to overlays, start soon is right here. It's unlocked. Overlays is locked. Unlock overlays. Click on overlays. There's the highlight of where it is. Click on stream start soon, and it highlights everything but... There it is. Wait, I think I got it. Okay. Why is it so far to the right? That's weird. Put that down. Hmm. Upper left. Let's go upper left with that. And now I can lock overlays again so that I don't end up changing anything on it. Lock in the audio. Chat, I guess it's in a good spot. No, wait, that's in this scene. Oh, crap. Well, I got to do that with the other scene then. So I'm just going to move you guys back over to where you normally go. Oh no, it looks like it moved it in every single scene. That's not great. Oh well. Yeah, I think I think the testing phase is going to be a bit more interesting than building the circuit. Because <sighs> i got to figure out what... Um, 
what the gains are running around the circuit, and we'll get it on the scope, and the scope will basically tell us everything we need to know. It's the, the other piece of sort of uh, being a detail-oriented engineering type versus audio engineering. The first thing we need to do is solve the gain of the original circuit that needs to match what I've got going on right now. And it might be down to the transistors that I used, because they're different transistors. We did use the same op amps, but we use different transistors. So maybe they're deleting my audio on the line differently. Something just fell. I think it was a 3D printed part by the sounds of it.
wire. That's not a good, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all, because this actually does not fit with the amount of wire that I've got. I need more. And it could just be friction keeping me from getting more wire, but I don't want to graft on more to this thing. smooth fade it's almost like i programmed it pause um oh, that didn't pause because twitch works like that right, pause okay uh then get rid of start soon and we're and we're back <laughs> how's everybody doing well hello there um okay what are we doing today all right we got uh a lot of stuff to do with burn the subs this would be the burn the subs uh two Point five, because the point five is basically um, a slight update on Burn the Subs 2. Burn the Subs 2 lasted for two years. 5,500 names ended up on the block of wood. Um, and if I'm going to give the next version of the board even a, 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 a sliver of that amount of time as tenure, then I need to do some stuff to it in order to make sure that I'm happy with it. Uh, and in doing so, it's sort of the shaving the yak. We're, we're, we're finding more and more little things that need uh, pieces of improvement. So today, I would like to spend some time in Fusion 360 actually measuring and positioning all of the external stuff to the laser cart, the, the part of the, the laser board that moves in the X and the Y axis. Now I could do this, I could make this out of metal. I can make this out of a lot of metal. Um, and I could plan out for everything on a piece of metal and then it would be absolutely sure in its position and uh, it wouldn't be light. I think, I think maybe doing um, plastic is going to be a little lighter and the, the material PETG, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I've worked with it, is gonna be strong enough to, to support the axis if we have, if we have you know, material that's thick enough on it. So in order to do that, 
we need to measure out some stuff on the cart. And before getting started, I actually wanted to work a little bit on uh, just getting the limit switches mounted. And so in, in shaving the yak tradition, um, the wires were not long enough, and now I have to graft new wires onto those wires. And then I'm probably gonna find out something's wrong with my wiring in the shop and I have to do something else with that and blah, 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 blah. You know, uh, up the stream it goes. Um, let's, just, let's just do it. Let's just get to work and do that. And then we can get to Fusion 360 so that we can do the rest of this. So that's where we are. All right, stream start. <laughs> I'm looking through the venerable uh, excess wiring bin. Whenever I have extra wires, I toss them in here, and then periodically I'll clean this bin out. Um, these are not new wires. These are old wires. So at least I am doing my part in recycling stuff whenever I use stuff from here. Although why a perfectly good headphone cable is in here, I don't know. That doesn't go in here. Uh, I mean, this would be my go-to choice, this DC power wire, but it's too thick. <laughs> It would be nice if it matched the rest of the look of the thing, but I don't think we're going to get that option. Yeah, this, is, this isn't so bad. We'll use this. Just uh, DC wiring, basic DC wiring. A little thick for my purposes, but in addition to that, I also use shrink wrap. That's the state of that bin, by the way, that drawer full of surface mount parts and whatnot. It's, it's a complete mess. Usually it's a little bit more... Usually it's a little bit more organized than that, but that's just where we're at today. Yeah, reduce, reuse, recycle. Hold on, I gotta get the heat, the heat gun. There it is, always within reach. Heat gun. All right, got everything I need in order to graft wiring on. You see, we printed these little brackets. I designed and printed those little brackets and these will hold up a little limit switch. This is the same type of switch that's in your computer mouse, only I've gotten rid of the little lever, the little metal lever on the front of these things, which is also what they do in computer mice. So we know that this thing has repeatability. Um, and, to, and I guess, uh, yeah, we can somewhat trust it. It's not Omeron, it's not uh, Omicron. I, don't, I forget what company it is. It's not like a super duper ultra brand, but hopefully we'll, we'll get some use out of it. Omeron, yeah, there you go. But yeah, we'll, we'll be using these now instead of the, the large arcade style ones. Uh, and I guess the more reliable contact area, which is directly on the metal of the, uh, well, the, well, the end plastic plate of the cart over here, um, that's where it's gonna contact. And I don't suspect this thing will wear away or move. <clears throat> om nom Ron, yeah. Yeah, something like that. I need like I need like less than an inch of wire. It's uh, this is ridiculous. This is this is bordering comedy. This is comedy adjacent. I don't even know what this was from. It's actually got a got a JST on one end too. A little locking thing too. Would have been smart to use something like that. Then I could at least plug in a cable. And if the cable's too short, I could have made a different cable and it would have still had all the same end pieces and stuff. But anyway, that's pretty much all the wire that I need in order to get this thing to go to here. Yeah, we don't, I don't, I don't have the ability to do smart things anymore. <laughs> I just need to get this done, you know? Oh God, I really, I really cocked that up, didn't I? It's cause it's so short that it's, I can just like pull the wire out. <laughs> Uh, maybe I need to like maybe strip and solder first so I don't lose all of my it's not it's not like this is carrying power power or anything it's just a signal line it's not really gonna matter but uh let me let me let me tin the ends first and see if that if that gets me to the right place with this thing how's chat doing I'm moderately on time today I'm a little late actually like got good sleep last night i guess well no no no. i didn't get good sleep but i got the bed like at a a decent time <laughs> at the very least i feel i feel robbed i feel robbed of of uh restive sleep <laughs> i'll get over it i'll get over it all right i'm gonna tin these ends in the ends, I'm, I'm really disappointed that our audio circuit didn't do anything, and I'm, I'm very curious to get back at that, um, the, the audio EQ circuit, 
I mean, I went through all the effort, right? Brought you guys along the trip of actually building something. I mean, I did that with the with the original amp, at least I did that and we had a good result. But in this case, we weren't doing anything complicated. You know, it wasn't it wasn't all that crazy complicated. We were just building a little EQ circuit. We got all the values right, right? And then it just didn't work. So barring God, this is this is clunky as shit. This is really bad. I don't like this at all, but uh, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I really don't like this at all. Chance I could find like some similar wire somewhere, but eh, it's just where we are with this project, right? And I'm gonna see this like all the time. I'm gonna see this. <laughs> I could put a piece of spiral wrap over this so that it doesn't stand out so much. It should probably be even shorter than that though. Yeah, god damn. I don't like this at all. <laughs> I don't like this at all. It's sloppy. I don't want to be sloppy with my future burn the subs projects, you know? And I know this is all like self-driven, right? There are no deadlines. I don't have a boss breathing down my neck. I have you guys to keep entertained, which I can do indefinitely working on the same project for a, a billion hours. My viewer numbers would go down, but I'm not really totally concerned with that. Um, I, I, like, I like existing outside of the pressures of normal streaming, but like, I don't know. <laughs> I want to get this thing done and I don't want to, I don't want to do a sloppy job of it because I want it to actually function well. That doesn't mean that I won't make mistakes and that doesn't mean that I want you guys to correct me all the time because I don't. I want to make mistakes. Mistakes are how you learn. Um, you don't learn from chat just telling you the answer to stuff. You guys know that already though. I don't have to, I don't have to lecture you guys in that. Although I kind of do considering what last stream was like. Um, but yeah, anyway. Point is, I'm trying to get this done and I'm trying not to do a shitty job of it. <laughs> hey, Wayne Johnson. Good night's sleep, four weeks since I had surgery. I can't get comfortable when I go to bed. I had that. Um, all of a sudden, one night, you will be able to sleep just fine. That's That's been my experience with stuff like surgery. Like. You know, you got that pain med sleep where you wake up in the middle of the night, like in, in horrible pain, and then you take the meds and then you can't sleep. Um, my experience with that is that eventually it just suddenly your body is just like, all right, we're done. And then, and then you're back to, back to sleeping normal again. Of course we know that, we know everything. Yes, right? Yeah, those are some of the, some of the times that like, I really have to kind of bite my tongue to not like jump down everyone's throat collectively because the one guy, you know, that one guy that's totally confident in what they're telling me at the time, that one guy, it's always that one guy. That, well, one person, I should, let's not, let's not jump to, uh, to labeling people here. That one chat member, there we go. That one chat member who will, who will be completely confident in what they're telling me and that I am doing it terribly and that I'm not doing what I should be doing and that I should be doing it a different way and that I'm fucking everything up and then my way works. <laughs> it's, there's always, always, always. And then there's, you know, there's the people who are technically right, who I should listen to, but I wanna make the mistake, cause then you, you get to see the mistake. Um, and it, that, that affects me because it's like, everybody, everybody kind of assumes that I'm dumb. Everybody assumes that I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot for not doing the thing that they just Googled or, you know, stuff like that. It gets to me, and I've, I've seen creators stop their channels, like, no longer create content because of that kind of thing. But yeah, I'm actually really good at troubleshooting, chat. I'm really, really good at troubleshooting. Uh, <laughs> I've had people want to use my channel as an example of such, especially considering that time the mill broke and I was able to just piece it back together and figure out exactly Narrow it down to a switch within like a minute. Um, but yeah, I make those mistakes sometimes. The trouble shoots back. <laughs> Got a gun battle on her hands. This is America. All right, let's get this grafted on. Uh, this is like, you know, welcome to yak shaving. What can I say? I, these these two wires behave differently, and I don't like it. But I'll get this done. 
That no. Oh, I can't even use a knife and fork right now. Damn, dude. I hope your recovery goes well. That sounds uh sounds troublesome. Yeah, it, like the the audio thing is really stressing me out because it just like didn't do what we thought it should do, and it, it's not that it's not that like okay I can live with it not working, but it didn't do anything. It didn't do anything, and I don't know why. Um, and so I've got to go a little deeper into the troubleshooting of it. How am I going to hold this in place to solder it? Hold on, maybe like this. Well, that's holding in place, but as soon as I melt the solder, I bet you it moves. I'm going to add a little bit of solder here so that i got something to go between the wires. Please stay in position. Not tea bag. All right, that'll do. That'll do, and I'm using clear over top of these joints so that I can forever remember this moment every time I film the, the axis of burn the subs. I turned this on, and I expected it to be plugged in, and it was not. <laughs> got to plug this in. Yeah, I gotta say, like, man, if I if I was in your situation, Wayne, I would be doing nothing but playing Satisfactory. <laughs> I had I had a thing where where I had like a like a something similar to a surgery healing for a long time, and uh, I decided to go back to work at like the minimum possible date, and I ended up like because of the pain meds, I was like falling asleep at work. It was ridiculous. Like people, man, people really expect you to like power through shit like that. And I was like, I just had to go to the boss and be like, dude, I can't do this. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not in good shape. I almost hit a uh, parking cone on the way out. How amazing would everything be if it were, were all 18650? I don't know, man. 18650s do a lot of work. They do a lot of work for society. We live, we live in a society and 18650s do a lot of work. But I don't I don't know how how much of an ideal society we'd live in if everything were eighteen six fifty. A little pencil heat gun does it heat up quickly? A manager like that, yeah, you see that all the time too. Managers like oh, I was only out for three days when I had my surgery. You should be back in. It's like whoa, <laughs> whoa. Managers are a curse. They're a blight on society. So you get a good one. <laughs> this is horrible. I really don't like this. I really dislike this grafting job, but it had to be done. But it's like the second wire graft that I put on this thing. Enough is enough. Plus, this solid piece of wire will at least let me shape the, uh, the path that it takes and keep it out of the way. It'll just be, this'll just serve as incentive for the new burn, the subs. That's what it'll be. I didn't even put the positive and, and negative wire on the right things. Uh, uh. I have better wire to use for burn the subs three. This does not get that wire. I know I've said that this is the project that gets all the good stuff, but there are some things that I'm keeping in reserve for the next version. All right, so if we never talk about this again, uh, I'll be happy. We could we could just not talk about this 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 crime towards uh makering that I've done here. But hopefully that won't be terribly visible, but it is right near the little the little lights, so it probably will be very visible. And if I were if I were better at my job, I guess I would put uh shrink wrap over the two ends over here, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna go through that trouble right now. I don't think I need to. Cause this should never move. This might this might vibrate a little as things are moving around, but for the most part, I think it's it's pretty well held in place. 
I mean, maybe I could use a little wire uh, holder down here, but I'm not gonna go through that trouble. Okay, so uh, that's one switch. Congratulations. Here's a cake. Um, let's go to the other side. Somehow, hold on. I have to manage all the wires coming out of this thing. So all the wiring in this thing is, is in something I call drag chain. Some people call it cable run. Um, I've seen even weirder names used to describe it, but this is what makes this thing so unwieldy. Oh, what just happened? Something just happened. Hold on. Somebody just did a thing. It came up on the screen, because that's how we roll here. Oh, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Moles. Um, I've heard it called many other things in drag chain, and drag chain will generally generally give you uh, an idea of what it actually is, but uh, there's like flexible wire conduit, uh, digit, or what is it? McMaster Car calls it something different anyway. Um, but yeah, let's get the other one of these mounts in here. So where did I put the, where did I put the 3D prints? I think they're up here. I think they are, yeah, here we go. We need this one. Oh, oh, fuck. All right, well, that thing's made out of metal. It'll be fine. That was uh, one of the microphone uh, holders, the, the mic packs that fell, hit the desk, and then flew behind me. All right, so these are just the 3D printed part that I created in AutoCAD. You take a look at the model. Boop. Boop. And then double boop. And this thing opens up. There you go. I got a couple different versions on here, but... Uh, this would be the final version right here that I've, I have distanced so that it fits uh, with the English sized rail on my metric sized maker beam. This is the kind of stuff that I was talking about on um, Cosmo Quest, which was having, and, and unfortunately I didn't get a chance to elaborate because it was tough with, with three people and a host. Uh, it's tough not to talk over everybody. Uh, and then you kind of get the floor and then I kind of forget what I was talking about or the point that I was trying to make in the middle of when I was talking. Um, what's up, nap fan? Man, I'm a fan of naps too. I don't take naps though. I don't know. If I'm awake, I'm awake. That's the problem with me. But anyway, um, the stuff that I was kind of talking about on Cosmo Quest was having, having a strong base thing, right? Like an, an aluminum extrusion. And then, uh, you know, the actual thing that you're trying to mount and then the 3D printer comes into play when you need custom parts that serve a specific purpose. That's really where I've, I've utilized 3D printing to, I think the best of its fruition, uh, is actually creating things like little brackets that are specifically uh, engineered for a device, right? And so that's kind of what we're doing with the X-axis today. Sorry, the, the, the cart, the laser axis part of the cart axis thingy today we're gonna do that um and then yeah uh, yeah you, you get what i'm saying you get what i'm saying i'm dragging it out i'm tired today i'm tired today i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try to actually be entertaining um okay so we need to mount the switch over here i've already got two bolts on it i'll just throw these things in there and then we'll get nuts on it and then we'll see where we can put this um it seems as though i'm going to have a little bit of trouble i might be able to sneak it back there a little bit but it, it seems like we're gonna lose a little bit of our axis here just because of the just because of the mounting. <laughs> it's like, oof, that is a uh, let me dust off all those references there, Schmeid. Let me just get the dust pan here. <laughs> all right, let's see. I took two bolts out earlier because I actually was able to have a little bit of a, an ability to plan ahead. But uh, I don't know where the other one went. I think I, I scooted it off somewhere. It, it got thrown around. Where you be at? Where'd it go? What'd the dog do? Sorry, what the dog doing? No, there it is. Found it. Got him. It's like Blue's Clues over here. Can you see where I put the 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 metric nut? No, over there. Huh? <laughs> 
This is too much wire. Oh, this is too much wire. We've got the opposite problem now. Uh, what do I want to do about that? What do I want to do with that? I could have cut wire from this and used it up here. God damn it. I could have done that. I could have done that. I absolutely could have and should have done that. Oh, well. Well, what happens when you don't look at the whole problem at once? We do want to keep this out of the way of things. Stuff that's going to be traveling around it. So I think maybe... Yeah, we'll go down and around this way. Down and around this way. Once I get the switches mounted, we'll, we'll take a look at the 3D model. Down and around and over. So it doesn't interfere. And then our length is going to be approximately that. Leave a little bit of wiggle room. A little bit more wiggle room. You can see, you can see when I measure it here, what I'm doing is I do a loose run of the wire, take it to the distance, pinch the wire for cutting it, and then as I'm positioning myself to cut it, you guys will see me walking back a little bit on the wire. And that's all just like, it's just in, intuiting. Uh, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but I'm, I'm, I'm just getting a feel for the amount of excess wire that I might have on here. And you gotta think about whether or not you're gonna wanna do it twice. Because uh, there's a possibility that I that I melt this material and it it unjackets itself. Because that's just the it's a, it's stereo wire. It's like the thinnest stereo wire I can find at Home Depot. And uh, boy oh boy, this jacketing material is not meant to withstand any heat. It turns into a gel very quickly, uh, and then and then it just sort of you know goes off and does whatever it wants. So if you have the wire flexed so that the metal is in a particular position and the jacket for the, the wire wants to straighten itself out again, it will actually melt its way out into being straight again. It's, it's horrible. Not a good material. But it's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be soldered. It's supposed to be put into one of those little, um, little spring pressure or screw terminal mounts for, uh, you know, for, for speaker wires. I did that with my nails. The problem with doing that with your nails, so there's a problem, there's a problem with doing it with your nails. Um, if you strip the wire with the nail, I don't know if I can display this properly. Well, first off, it hurts your nails. <laughs> but that's fine, we're used to that sort of thing around here. But um, what this does, stripping it with my nail, what it does is it stretches out that rubbery kind of jacket material. It doesn't cut the rubber jacket immediately, it stretches it out. And so now, when I heat up this, this is going to return to its original shape in the presence of the heat. So it will actually retract fairly significantly from where it is right now, because this is such a weird, soft material that's hard to work with. It's kind of like a, I don't think it's PVC, it's, I don't know, it's some hateful plastic. Look at my slideshow here, God, visuals look really weird. Um, yeah, anyway, this, this stuff, when you pinch and pull and try to strip the wire that way, um, the, the stretched wire will now retract very significantly when I saw it at the end. Um, so I, I should have used the, the wire strippers on that. Um, anyway. But in, in, in the same sense, when I strip it with the wire strippers, uh, it'll cut it and bring it out cleanly. If I bend the wire and the jacket wants to straighten out again, it will melt its way out of there. It'll be like a, like a, like a heat cutter, like a hot wire cutter. All right, so... That's going to be a weird soldering job, but we'll just do it. We'll pre-tin these. Everything, everything already having solder on it. And the jackets will track. Pre-tinning is important because then you can spend less time heating your joints and everything, and you get good, good solder adhesion to everything. So pre-tinning it means that I'm putting a little bit more solder on these by heating the back of the wire putting the solder on the front of the wire, and then it melts through the wire, and it, the flux, the, the rosin core, or whatever of this, of this solder, will get into that, that joint, and, and it'll, of course, prevent oxidation and, and allow good contact and all that stuff. 
and then you print in your contacts in the same way, does all that stuff too. Now you've just got solder that needs to join in with solder when you put the two together. So pre-tinning is a, is a vital step in all of this. So, all right, uh, let's see. That switch, I guess we'll use. So I do this. I break it. I crush. So now we have just a bare button. Dun, dun, dun. Um, all right, so the bare button, solder onto the contacts. And actually, these could be a little shorter. Eh, no, those are probably good. Yeah, those will be good. Those will be good. I got to think of the adjustment, too. What if? What if I mess up? That's one. Uh, we didn't have to graft this one, fortunately. Unfortunately, I created wire that I could have used in the other graft so that I would, I would maintain a consistent look. It's not like the electrons are going to flow better through the different wires. Number two. All right. The large. Got that. Two screws. Screw kit. I found this laptop screw kit off of Amazon, and I have been doing nothing but buying extras. I've done nothing but teleport bread. Um, yeah, I've been doing nothing but buying more of these because these are pan head screws, and they're metric. It's a laptop screw kit, but the pan heads are cool because in Fusion 360, I can just put a one millimeter divot, and then these will look very clean uh, on the on the end design. I like them quite a bit. All right, I'm, uh, the problem is this is the old kit, so it's starting to run out of stuff. Where are my tweezers at? Where they, where they get to? There they are. So I need to find... I think it's these. I think, I think this is the size. Actually, yeah, I have a bunch of these. Okay, good. <laughs> Phew. I guess I, I guess I designed it for a, a non-sequitur size screw that I barely ever use. <coughs> Hopefully. I mean, I'll be... I'll be shocked. I'll have egg on my face when these don't actually go properly. And then the holes I severely undersized because I wanted to have a lot of pressure on the screw so that the switch would not move. That's the important thing is that when these things, you know, there, there might be a little bit of mechanical force against these from the stepper motor. I want to make sure that everything stays nice and, uh, Nice and nice and mounted, you know. Ah, that's interesting. It looks like the switch isn't mounting straight on this. What's going on there? Hold on a minute. I'm gonna take a look at the switch. Look what's happening. Uh, let's see if I can get the let's see if I can get the shot. <laughs> oh, the delay on the camera is really weird. It's not um the camera isn't initialized. So it's like, it's all crazy right now. Yeah, look what's going on here. Well, first of all, there's a hair. I swear it's a beard hair. So my bracket has an offset so that it can avoid the rail. But for some reason, the switch isn't mounting flat. Now, is that down to the screws? If I push on it here, it's not flattening out. What's that all about? Let's get that out of there and see what's going on. I may have to initialize this camera because I'm starting to get really pissed off at the weird looking visuals that we're getting out of it. It's like, uh, you guys might not see it, but there's like a delay on my movement versus the movement of the camera. What's going on there? What's the dog doing? I mean, I've got it mounting on those two little, the little nubs off of the switch. I don't think that is taller than. I think that's the same distance. What's this look like? By all means, that should be mounting flat. Maybe it's maybe it's this stuff coming up off of the. Yeah, maybe it is this the plastic that's coming up out of the screw hole. So I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna take a blade and uh, and cut that cut that flush. Like a scalpel. God, it looks like a weird fucking filter that I put on the camera. I mean, yeah, I guess countersinking it. I don't know. I don't think... Well, but the thing is, this is against the print bed. So I want I want that a flat surface to, to print better on the print bed. 
Counter sinks you can print on the on the flat print bed, but I just didn't want to deal with that. It would be so, such a small thing, you know. And so is this trimming trimming your three D print with a, with a blade just comes with the territory. Why do more steps to make the same work? Why use more word when few will do? Or when few do? <laughs> eh. It's just important that that's flush, I guess. I mean, I, what more important than that is just that it stays in the same position. So, I don't know. Let's try it now. Let's try it now. Oh, there's already screwing it. What are you doing? Crimes. I'm doing crimes. What the dog doing? Why are you like this? Wait a minute. What if I tighten it up? Really? Metric and Imperial? Why, why do they fight like this? <laughs> Why are they so so dumbly different? I don't know, I'm just gonna tighten it up and it it seems okay, it's not as off as it was before. Maybe just the screws are at a weird angle. Alright, let's get let's get out of this camera because it's freaking me out. Um yeah, alright. It doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Alright. Axis is rolling on. It's like trucking along. It's like, yo, I got a lot of stuff to do today. Get out of my way. Click. 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 Good click. Yeah, that's a pretty damn good click. Let's take a look at the click. Oh, the visuals on this camera are terrible. Yeah, so it does deflect when it uh when it bumps, but it bumps before it deflects. Hopefully that's okay. And as long as it can it can take the full force of the cart. I could put in a bump stop for that, but I can't really do much for that deflection unless I put more bolstering material on this or if I have it go over to the other side and anchor there. I think this is okay though. It's a fair sight better than what we had before. I just don't like, I don't like it deflecting. But this is, I mean, most of the switch surface is being used here. Is it the screw every time? It is, it is. Uh, so I could put, I could put a little piece of material on either side if I really want to. I could put a little piece of material on here. Or I could replace these screws with something that's, why is my, why do, do I have the finger of God? What is happening here? <laughs> Hold on, I gotta do. Hey Demi, how you doing, man? Um, I gotta, I gotta change my my microscope properties. Hold on, configure video FPS or FPS to thirty. Click OK. Notice how the visuals changed just then. Properties. Go to configure video. I get to actually like turn off all of this auto shit that turns on with Logitech cameras, and it turns itself back on every single time. It's really annoying. All right, click apply on that, click OK. Now I can go back to 60 FPS, which is a uh, uh, highest FPS. Click OK. Is everything going to change? Nothing changed. All right, configure the video. Now I can actually take the color temperature to where I want it to be. I think it was 4300. And then the gain is set all the way up, which is ridiculous. So I then futz the gain. Open the aperture a little bit. There we go. Ah. Let's check over here. Okay, all the settings are in. Click OK. And then click OK. All right, there. Now we can actually see what's going on um, without, without things looking terrible. So yeah, the screw the screw is deflecting it once again. Uh, this is what happened last time. The screw here and then the button down here. Um, 
the problem is the button gets pressed and then the screw deflects it away. So I could mess with this screw right here and try to change that around in order to make this thing work properly. Or I could leave it the way it is because it's not that big of a deal. Uh, a little bit of flex in the plastic, barely even like a fraction of a millimeter is not so bad. Um, or I could put a little bumper on, on this end here. I could put a little bumper on this uh, that would interface with this a little bit better. I don't really know what I want to do with that. <laughs> I think I'm just going to leave it alone. Let's check the other side. All the way over. Like many hundreds of millimeters. I don't know how many. Uh, 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 where is it? Oh, God, come on. I can't. Uh, I got to move the camera. I got to do this. I didn't want to do this. All right. So here's the other one. That one's not sitting flat at all either. It's like all messed up. Hold on. Let me attach that a little better. That one's all messed up. This is the important one too. Here, let's get, let's uh, shave the, let's shave the platen. Shave the yak, shave the platen. Shave the world. How's everybody else's projects doing? Mine are hopelessly, uh, hopelessly in the territory of shaving yaks and or just non-functioning. Feels great, doesn't it? The weight of the world. <laughs> we'll get to the bottom of the audio stuff. It's just gonna take a little bit of fiddling. I'm very disappointed in that circuit not working, but I think with the O-scope, we can, we can check some stuff. It's, uh, the unfortunate part is that I can't manufacture the EQ stages on perforated prototyping boards for the test setup uh, because I don't know that it works. And I, I think it's probably down to adjusting gains. I might have better luck with the op-amp circuit, to be honest. I've always had better luck with, with op-amps than with transistors. Because I don't have the exact transistors that he calls for, and I don't think I want to do like a Hail Mary and just buy them. Because the BC34s, well, we got to figure out whether or not that's where the gain's coming from. Okay, so those, that's flat now. Uh, didn't know that would be part of the procedure here. <laughs> Same boat. That's good. My keyboard should look really cool. All the, all the, all the, all the wood. Am I, am I gonna live with this? Am I gonna live with this? Can I live with this detail, this little detail right here? Can I live with this little detail? Am I capable of doing that in this world? Can I do that as like a, as like somebody who creates things that are sometimes a little bit janky and isn't, isn't totally triggered by it? Can I live in a world where I've put a weird, Uncle, Uncle Phil had forgotten about it. He's better. He's he's a better person than all of us. <laughs> he she it. <laughs> God damn it! All right, I'm gonna live with it. I'm gonna put it back in here, and I'm not gonna think about it until it winds up on camera in a month. <laughs> God damn it! I'm not gonna. We're not gonna think about it, chat. We're not gonna think about it. We're just gonna go forward with this. I know, BTS 2.5, but this thing might be up for multiple years. Might be up for multiple years. Let me move the axis all the way over to the microscope shot here. Approaching, 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 approaching. Any minute now. Approaching. <laughs> Come on. Where is this thing? There it is. Click. Yeah, and then the screw gets in the way. But it clicks. Uh, you guys may not be able to hear the little tick tick that it's making. But yeah, that's held in place and that's functional. So that'll that'll do. That'll do. That'll do. <sighs> Fortunately, it doesn't need to know exactly what it is. Um, next time you have to cut the plastic off. A bitly link. It's a virus. I have plenty of those. Yeah, I don't, I don't really need those. Cutting it, cutting it flat with a blade is perfectly fine. It works well. Um, okay. The axis is sort of put together now, right? 
But here's the thing. I don't want this maker beam thing to be this axis, right? I don't want the maker beam thing to be the axis because I tried it out and the mount that I came up with was fairly unreliable. I've only got one post in here. Um, the previous one had two. It was a smaller cart and it had two posts and I was able to kind of balance things on that and it was okay. Uh, there's some misalignment. For instance, the height of the, um, the belt coming in, it, it's a little bit, it's coming in a little tall. Uh, this is not the most elegant way to mount the belt. And then I've got the big cleat sitting down here on that with a lock nut. I think we can do a better job of that. I think I can come up with something that will mount this thing properly. The drag chain, I could probably use a separate piece that screws onto this in order to mount the drag chain upside down and then give it a little blocker so that it doesn't, it doesn't come up and forward. So something 3D printed from both this, this piece right here, this, this plate right here being the the uh the bed of the printer so print up from there and then on this one flip that around so that we're printing up from whatever materials on top of this thing uh in the opposite direction and then i think we'll be able to have um a complete y or whatever it is laser axis now some things that i had been working on were trying to get the laser to be cooled. I don't think that's as super necessary it is a one watt laser so it is giving off a lot of heat um, the future burn the subs will be water cooled because it's funny and because it'll be fun. Um, but this one will not, this one remains air cooled. And so for air cooling, I was thinking, Hey, maybe I could use like an M.2, uh, M.2 drive heatsink. Uh, and so we spent a little bit of time modeling this, getting this into CAD and, uh, bending the tubes to be straight, uh, so that we could use it as a laser cooler. I'm not hundred percent on that anymore. I don't know if that's actually going to really make a lot of sense in the in the future thing because uh, in order to mount the laser, I am going to use one of these uh, tube brackets, a 12 millimeter tube bracket, uh, and then this is just a little line projecting laser. Um, I can move the diode into this, or I can use a new diode. I might use a new diode. Um, put a new diode into this, move my lens over, my really nice lens over to this one. Um, and then, of course, you know, the, the back end of this thing is just going to be for... Uh, the cables going out and there's not going to be a whole lot going on the, the the back of these little laser carriers they have a little circuit board inside of them because that's where you turn your dc into the constant current uh for the laser but uh that's what this board is doing for us so we don't need that so we don't need all of the back end of the laser here i'm going to keep it just so that it looks like something you know that's properly mounted and everything and i'll put a little squidge of uh heat sink compound uh between the two so that we're bleeding all our heat into this block this block is probably enough dissipation of heat for the entire thing. It'll get warm, but it can get warm. It's okay if it gets warm. So my thought is that maybe I just leave that out. And so we'll have the laser coming off of this axis at a 90 degree angle. I'll have the screw holes that hold the platen down. I'm gonna have to figure out how the belts will mount on top of that. Maybe we can just move them slightly out of the way. And then we need to position the circuit board and the drag chain so that everything goes together properly in the end. So we're gonna have to disassemble this a little bit um, and then measure that end of the drag chain. I tried to find a 3D model for the drag chain. Um, I got something off of DigiKey. I wasn't able to find anything that was uh, accurate enough for my purposes. And DigiKey omitted the one part that I need. I don't need, I don't need the entire drag chain, DigiKey. I mean, maybe, maybe if my design was like more extensive and I was actually gonna pay your exorbitant prices on on something that can be uh, sourced for very cheap, but uh, you know, I don't, I don't need this. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe in a future design, I could use something like this, but like, this is the smallest drag chain that they have. It has one dimension that's similar to mine, but it's not the same stuff. You and I are not the same. Uh, it's similar, but I don't think it's going to really work out. It's a gorgeous 3D model, very good 3D model. Uh, but yeah, that's not, that ain't this. So we need to model the end of this. We need to model the, the, the part of this that screws in. I don't need this part. I mean, it would be nice to observe maybe the radius here, but just to get that height right. But other than that, we're okay. So <laughs> thank you, Gonad. What's happening? <laughs> Alrighty, so yeah, let's uh, 
Let's get the end off of this drag chain so that we can start, uh, start 3D modeling that. It's unfortunate that I have to do this. Uh, this comes from some, you know, random ass company that I can't, I can't track down. I tried, I tried to find something that would work. Um, GrabCAD didn't have what I was looking for. I get really confused when I try to just go to GrabCAD because their website, they, they're trying to be like a CAD services website. But like, if you dig in, you could find their library and that's where you get all the good stuff. But you have to actually like dig around on their website in order to find out, you know, where the stuff is. Yeah, yeah, the old XKCD, move the hyphen. Move the hyphen, put it wherever you want. See if I care. I'm trying to put a resistor in a in the breadboard. There we go. Okay. Um. Blah 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 blah. Are these the same threads? I think they are. Yeah, they look like the same thing. Only one has different glass in it. That's good. Cause yeah, this is what we had before. This is sort of the the core of the um of another heatsink for one of these laser setups. But we'll be using this instead because this will hold it. This will hold it way better than the the uh, copper bracket that we had before. So all right, let's uh, let's extract the thing from the thing. Extract the thing from the thing. And we may have to build up an analog of this board, which would be a couple connectors. This thing. I th I don't know if I have a 3D model of one of these, and I could put the capacitor in there, and we could just try to get it as approximate to what ac actually exists as possible. Why does my insulin pump like always? It's just like. Hey, let me, let me interrupt you now. Thank you, thank you. Test the glucose level. I don't think I will. Jesus Christ. Fucking thing can't be helped. I, I don't know if they considered that maybe sometimes diabetics would be in like broadcasting and they, they maybe don't want, they want the peace of mind of something watching over their glucose levels while they're, while they're doing their thing. And also don't want to be freaking constantly pestered by their equipment. Especially when it's pestering you and things are fine. <laughs> Come on, man. I understand, like, I've muted all of the warnings that I possibly can on the pump. And yet it's still an indomitable fucking pest. Really pisses me off. Alright. Laser circuit board. Now, we were previously using the maker beam. I'll have to come up with something else. And then this... Is actually there's actually a modified piece of maker beam here. I, I I stretched one of the holes, so it's garbage when I'm done with it today. But that was so that it, it fit this bracket here that starts off the uh, drag chain. Now we can have a piece of plastic there, and that piece of plastic will start off the drag chain. So let's let's separate this thing and take a look at it. I know it's diva. It's a diva. Come on. Come on. What the f... What the heck? Hold on. Just gotta get it so that it lets go... Oh, no. And let go of the other one. It's hurting my fingers. Okay. There. Got him. Got him. Got him. Okay. That thing right there. That's what I would like to model. That thing, and then eventually the circuit board. So these two things. Fusion 360 excels in this sort of thing. Let's get started. So this bracket, black plastic, we need a ramp. I don't know the angle. Um, and then we have circles, circles within circles, interlinked. Um, blah! Let's make the base platen first. So uh, it is a very complicated square. This, this is gonna be tough. Also, what, is that a company logo? You could look up that company and find, find a 3D model that they've already made. They always get those little details correct, whereas if we make a 3D model, uh, I might omit some of the little things that I don't need. Like, they'll have, in their 3D model, they will have their company logo on it. Okay, I don't think this is going to let me find your company very easily, buddy. HTTL? Let's see if we can, let's see if we can find something like that. Let's see what we can find. HTTL. I have all the audio stuff in front of my face because of the because of the project. God, if I click this button and alter drums one, I'm gonna have a bad time. I'm gonna have a bad time. Make sure that's saved. Make sure that's saved. 
this out of the way. Get this out of the way. Uh, and then we need internet window. HTTL drag chain. They didn't find HTTL, I'm guessing, huh? Yeah, I mean, this is literally... The, it'll probably pull up the, literally the, the auction for it. Hey, Silly Russell, thank you for the sub. Typical cheese serif font, yeah. Thank you for the sub. Tank chain machine tool accessories. I don't think any of this is going to be exactly relevant. The, this is actually the this is actually the one that I bought, right? There it is. Oh my God, dear God, go away. Um, yeah, this is the one that I actually bought, but they don't have any mechanical drawings. Typically, it, it typically people will people will give you a mechanical drawing because they want you to be able to make your design with their product so that you use their product. Uh, but this is not like that. <laughs> Toe line cannot open. <laughs> Movement, low noise, wear resistant. Blah, 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 blah. Somebody has a mechanical drawing of this, and I'm not that person. So I am going to, I am going to need to work on this. I'm going to need to uh, make this, which is not that big of a deal. It's just, it's just interesting that you can't find any information about something like this. Um, flat flex. Poss yeah, I could probably get away with flat flex. I used this stuff because it was easy, but um, if I get like that flat cable that you can like, I have some of that speaker cable sitting around. It's only four wires in there. I think I have one that has slightly more wires than that. Um, or I could buy like a Raspberry Pi cam thing and put the connector on either end. That would probably be good. It would probably be a lot lighter. Visually, this thing is more cool though. But I think in the end, yeah, um, maybe, on, maybe on Burn the Subs 3, we can minimize uh, that cable run. I will need tubes on Burn the Subs 3 because there will be water cooling in effect, but um, the really the really flexible flat cables with a couple tubes on them, we could make that into something. Yeah, I could I could just do little, little brackets along the path and then that'll be super light. Um, and it'll, you know, my axis will be able to move reliably and stuff like that. You know, like in a real printer, in a real printer. But yeah, this this stuff looks cool. <laughs> That's a uh, why'd you why'd you do this? So bother? Did you know that that if you run the numbers, this can work better than no? Yeah, it, it looks cool. All right, so this is not the right thing. Go away. Um, I think I already started the document for it. I did belt bracket. Ta-da! Look at all the stuff that we got going on here. Man, this is it's just you love to see it. All right, so where are we starting with this design? Well, I mean, it's a square. So let's start. I mean, let's let's just start with a square. Huh? It's a it's a square. It's just a. I mean, you know, far be it from me to jump into the super duper reverse engineering thing. Like I'm invading the private life of somebody who made this thing. But I I see squares and circles interlinked. More of a rectangle. You're fired. You you. you I'm gonna call your boss. Uh, all right, so yeah, let's uh, let's just measure that square and then let's work out from there. Easy enough. All right. Um, where are my calipers? <laughs> oh, there they are. They're on the other desk. Give me one sec. Well, you guys don't know HTTL? <laughs> Hypertext transmission. Load a call. I don't know. Yeah, it is, it's very Lego-y. Language. There you go. 20 millimeters. By God. I think they are actually designing this in millimeter. 20 by 14? Yeah, 20 by 14. First box. First box. 20 by 14. Start a sketch. Start it on, I don't know, this axis, who cares? Uh, and then do a create rectangle. Let's do a center rectangle, because typically, um, I mean, we don't have to do everything from the center, but I think it'll, I think it'll help us out uh, doing everything from the center. That's kind of how 
parts designers and machinists think, so we'll try it. So, 2014, done. Zoom in. There's our, there's our base platen. Well, what do we have in the base platen? We have a bunch of stuff going on. So we got another square, believe it or not. Believe it or not, guys, we got another square. I hate to break it to you, but that's just the truth of the matter. Is that there is an 8 millimeter by... I'm guessing 19 or 18? 8 by 18? 8 by 17. Kind of a friggin' weirdo are we talking about here. I'm gonna go 8 by 17. It's not, it's not a, an incredibly important detail, but... Eight. Nope, that one's 17. Eight. All right. Now, center to center on the holes. That's a little bit more difficult to do. Um, but we can get around it with various measurement techniques. The holes themselves are... Uh, I can trust my outside edges a little better. I need to get new calipers, chat. Chat, please, I'm poor. I don't have any money. I need, I need, I need your pennies for, for calipers. Oh my god. Oh. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be destitute if I have to use slightly off, slightly damaged Mitatoyos. I need brand new Mitatoyos with a neural interface. Oh, 5.19. So five millimeter circles around our holes. Um and then these holes are countersunk, so I'm tempted not to put them in until the end. <laughs> Stop it. Stop don't no. Don't get manipulated, alright? Jeez, you guys are better than that. <laughs> Five millimeters, right? Yeah, I'm not even using the mics. I'm using the calipers. I got a lot of good stuff done with these. So 9.27 on that side. Is that a different distance? You gotta be kidding me. It's a different dis it's a different distance. It's the distance is different. It's de demonstrably different. Project four five four. <laughs> Thank you, but don't 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 get manipulated. <laughs> All right, jeez. All right, so maybe my theory about this thing being centered is off. Does it look like it's Does it look like it's not really kind of like centered? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like there's there's a little bit more distance on this side. There is on this side. It might be true. It might be a little bit more on one side than the other. What's up, Maverick? Yeah, so my, my... Everything will be easier if we just center everything. Nope. Definitely big... No, that's a big negative. That's a negative, Ghost Rider. Callan27, thank you for the 13 months. That's awesome of you. I really appreciate that. What's the thermal for? Uh, it's soldering, but we're not soldering right now. We're doing mechanical stuff. So it's, I mean, what's anything for? Why even have video? Why don't I just do a podcast? <laughs> why, why do anything? Because it's cool. That's why we do things. It looks like they designed like the square first and then did the, the wings up, up from that. At least that's how the mold works, because we can see the mold lines on it. <clears throat> it's just to prove that I'm not a zombie, yeah. Ain't no zomber. I don't I think I I think I made this one weird with the squares that I put in. The the square the blah, blah, blah. the square fasteners that I put in squishing the plastic. I think that one's totally my fault, but let's take a look here. So these are different distances. I measured the outer block as five, and then I guess I could go from here over to do those distances. So I didn't have to do this uh, centered at zero, zero, because that's I thought I would be able to use that center line and go out from that on either end by just measuring the ends of these, but it would be on an offset. So it's just super weird. Well, Cam, it's a, uh, uh, there's a command. Yeah, there you go. There's the command. If, if anybody else is curious. There it is right there. You can barely read it. There we go. Lepton three and a half sensor inside of the pure thermal. 
Mini Pro module by Get Labs. So Lepton 3.5. Actually, if you're familiar with thermal cameras, you will know that color palette is the Lepton color palette. It's actually copyrighted. Um, okay, so let us let us start designing this. And I guess what I'm going to do is I'll just take it from one end and I'll measure out to this end, and then we subtract two and a half from that in order to get to our center point. So one end over minus two and a half, center point, five millimeter, and then I'll do the countersunk screws separately. Since I want to have I want to have the ramp on the end, which I could just do with a with a fillet, just just because it's supposed to look like the thing and have the holes be in the right place. And other than that, I don't care about the rest of the model. But we'll try to we'll try to we'll try to get the wings in here. This weird feature. Yeah, we'll try to get that right. All right. So uh, that means I got to do measurements here. I guess I'm willing to call that 9.3, even though I hate going down to that decimal. That one seems to be exactly 17. 9.3 and 17. Interesting. Yeah, you could probably do that. Although, I don't know why you'd want your $350 sensor to be sitting out there in the breeze like that. 9.3 minus 2.5. And then 17... Did I hit a bunch of buttons? 17 minus 2.5. I'll trust myself to do the math, so I'm just putting it into AutoCAD, and it'll do it for me. And then we got a non-construction 5 millimeter circle. 5. 5 by 5. All right, and then that one's 5, 2, and that is that part of the, that thing. So we can start with this. We can start with this. The sensor is so incredibly fragile that I wouldn't suggest trying to make any tactical gear out of it. That's the other thing. The thickness of our plate is two millimeter. Let's make that two millimeter extrusion on everything. So I'm gonna finish that sketch, try to keep it from getting too busy. I'm gonna hit extrude. Why did that come up in the middle of my vision? All right, extrude, we'll select the stuff. I'll take it up two millimeter. Oh, then I gotta then I gotta review the sketch, view the sketch, and then I'm gonna extrude this part here. What's that depth? Use the depthing tool. That's 0.94. I guess I'll make that one. All right, that's the start of things. Looking good, looking good. All right, so we're going to extrude up from there the rest of this ramp thing, right? Um, the thing is, all right, yeah, you would have to somehow turn it into, like, a video signal, um, and then you would have to get, like, uh, FPV goggles, sort of, to make the optics work properly, uh, and those, those can actually be kind of pricey. Uh, maybe you can buy somebody's old Vive headset or something. <laughs> but like getting getting a picture onto a screen is a, a a bit harder than you'd think. It shouldn't be, but it is. Um, because yeah, they're not. You don't want to output to analog audio. You don't need to do that. Or sorry, analog video. You don't need to do that. You could just take it in and and pipe it to the screen. Um, but then at the same time, there's other features of the Lepton camera that you would be neglecting. Like for instance, this one in particular has a lens that covers over everything and then uncovers it again. So periodically, you will see the video signal. Um, freeze and that freezing video signal is actually you know it locking uh, it, it recalibrating because it's a it's a without having um, refrigeration in it it requires it to be kind of calibrated because the sensors will drift around and things will start to look bad um, it's not extremely high frame rate either so that that'll be disorienting um, it's hard to get high frame rate uh, thermal imaging because you know the, the it could be used to make an improvised weapon. Um, so, yeah, anyway. There's all kinds of eye tire restrictions on, on thermals and stuff like that. So, yeah, I don't know. That's crazy. It's a mad, 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 mad world. 
All right, um, we got a one millimeter. Actually, that's not a one millimeter offset. So whatever, whatever we come up with for this, which I don't think is gonna come off of this base. I think maybe we go off of the side. So if we go off the side of this and try to make this shape, the little swoopy shape. Hey, you're welcome, you're welcome to experiment with it and do that. It's one millimeter, okay. So we got one millimeter offset. Yeah, you're welcome to spend, you're welcome to spend the, the $350 per sensor to try to make yourself thermal goggles, thermal stereo vision goggles. I'd be very interested in reading that article. Um, all right, so let's make a sketch on this face. Create sketch. Ta-da. We did it. We made a sketch. Um, it starts at one millimeter, and then it goes all the way out to this hole that's sitting off of the end. I don't know how the hell I'm going to be able to figure out that distance. I mean, if I go from all the way over here, I can say that this thing is 30.6, so maybe 30, I don't know, 30.6 30 seems like, that's like 31 millimeters? What is that? What is that distance? What did you, what did you people design? What did you guys design, huh? Huh? What did you make? Why did you make it like this? Look, like 31 millimeter. That sucks. All right, fine. 31 millimeter. One millimeter offset. Diameter. Ten and a half. Ten and a half? <laughs> Why do you do this to me? I'm calling that ten and a half. So if that's ten and a half, one millimeter offset. 30. Can we get... Can we actually figure out where that hole center is based on what I've got going on here? Let's see. So we have, we have a one millimeter offset, which basically puts us in the center of this. Um, so I'll go from the center of that with a construction line, and then I'm gonna go, what is it? 31 millimeters out. Well, it would be 31 minus 10.25? No, minus 5.25, because it's, it's 10 and a half. That's where that is. And then we're going, oops, 10.25. Five over two. <laughs> so that's where the circle is. Jeez. And then our outside circle is, of course, ten and a half. I mean, I could just do that. I might as well, might as well just take that to there. Well, I'll do that differently. I'll do that in a separate dimension, just in case things things get arranged around in weird ways. And then the hole in the center is four and a half. These aren't important dimensions. This is just to make it look right. No, what did I do? That was four and a half. I'm tired. The, uh, the, the measurements do not come easily to me today. All right, so we need a solid line here. I'll go like that. That solid line will just help me uh, uh, define where the extrusion is. Um, and then the front of this thing, how is that going to work? No, I don't. The, the new iPhone, you can do some cool stuff with that, uh, all, the, all the facial mapping and stuff. I'll tell you, on, um, on night vision, if you have a new iPhone, it'll periodically light up your pocket, like, ridiculously. So if, you've, if, you're, if, you're, if you happen to find yourself in the situation where you're hiding from somebody uh, with, who has night vision, don't use your iPhone. Don't use your new iPhone, because it's like a beacon. Um, it, it lights up your whole damn face with infrared when you, when you pull out your iPhone. But apparently you could do a lot of cool object mapping with that. Um, what we're doing right now is a much more direct and cleaner way of getting your object from the real world into uh, three-dimensional space, uh, whatever it is, computer space, because we're actually reverse engineering what the design decisions were on this thing. 
Um, 3D scanning is all well and good, but that's going to absolutely drown you with information that you then have to kind of design around. And if you take that information as gospel, it's oftentimes not all that accurate, so. I mean, cell phones, I don't know. Cell phones don't show up particularly hot. The screens can. Uh, my phone is actually cold right now. Uh, but if you're really like using your GPS, it'll probably heat up. But also this is a this is actually a metal phone, a relic from, from years and years ago. Back when people were machining aluminum to make their phones feel fancy. Um, okay. What is that slope? I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I have no idea. Rise over run. Eh, that doesn't really help us out. I could try to use my angle blocks to make that flat, and then we'd know. Um, but there's, there's like a little detail on this that makes it a little different. Now, we don't need to fully completely represent this, but it would be nice, at least as somebody who's doing a... Uh, doing an internet show that I actually like put my best foot forward on this thing. But yeah, we've got, we've got a little like, like rise there and then we've got a chamfer or the, sorry, a fillet. And then we have a, a slope on this thing. I don't know what the slope is. Rise over run though. Rise over run. I could do it. I could, I could measure it here. We'll do that. We'll turn you guys back up on the screen. Ah, uh, let's see. Well, over here, I mean, that rise is going to be somewhere over there. And I could probably measure that and just get that approximate and then take that up. Because that just goes to the, that just goes to the tangent up there. It just goes to the, the, the top position of the circle. So I'll just take that angle down all the way over here. I don't know if, is it? No, it, it is tangent. Yeah, it looks like it comes a little bit forward of that, which is fine. Um... So I can just take, and I'm guessing it's going to be a, re a reasonably square number, right? Be like around there. Three millimeter, three and a half. Yeah, it seems, it seems a little closer to three millimeter. Okay. Three millimeters, we'll just do that. And then I'll, and then I'll fix it in post. So three millimeter construction line. Doot, doot, doot. And we'll make that three. No, not four. Three. Actually, that should be a solid line. And it was. Okay, good. Three millimeter up from... Mm, no, wait. Three millimeter from the bottom. That's right. Here. Three. Not four. Three. Three millimeter. Take that. And come over to here. There's the tangent point. So that's what that little symbol is that popped up. So fusion has all of these little, all these snap points in mind for you. Now, if I really wanted to snap to the, the uh, top point of the circle, I would run a construction line straight up until it, until it met the edge. Actually, right there, it, it's locking in now that I've reminded it. But what, what I'm looking for is for this line to come cleanly off of the circle. So I take the tangent snap right there and boom, boom, headshot. I think that's what we're looking for. I will, I will put the rounded edge on this curve in post. We'll do that after we create the solid. See, that's simple enough. Finish that sketch. So now we need to extrude one and a half millimeter on either side. I could try symmetrical extrusions. Well, let's get into the extrusion menu first. So E for extrude and then click the solids. That's not, it's not a solid. Cancel, go back to the sketch, go back to the sketch. Come on, back to the sketch. Let's take this line. Yeah, we didn't need we didn't need that extra line there, but that's all right. Uh, so I'm gonna make that I'm gonna make that into just a regular line. So now it's no longer a construction line that'll become part of the solid. I could possibly also try to project pieces of this solid on there, but ah, it's not necessary. Okay, so finish that sketch, and now I can extrude. Oh, now it does it. <laughs> You bastards. I, I don't know why it didn't do... Okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, so that's one and a half millimeter. And that's probably doing the wrong direction. Yep. So we're going to make that a negative one and a half. And let's see if we can do a symmetric on this. That, that It makes sense that it would be... Okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> maybe not symmetric. Maybe two sides. 
No, because they both have to start in the same spot for it to be two. Okay, so we don't need any of that. We'll just do one side. We'll just do two extrusions in order to make this. So there's one and a half millimeter like that. I need to review the sketch. We can hide the other sketch. We don't need it right now. Hit extrude, click, click. And then this time it's coming from an object. I could do an offset on that, but we'll just do an object. And then now that's going 1.5 millimeter in the positive direction. So there we go. There's that. No more view of the sketch. Nope, you go away, you go away. Dun, 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 dun. That's looking a lot like the thing that we're building. Yeah, I don't know if um, my extrusions have that mirrored over the center line. So anyway, we can use a chamfer. Sorry, a fillet, a fillet. I wish the other one was called a chamfer because I learned them the wrong way around. One and a quarter. Yeah, good enough. That's pretty much our object. The last thing that I want to do is add the screw holes. So the screw holes are going to be a projected point from the other side. I need to have a point up here. Um, I could use a, a variety of tools to do that. The, the hole making tool, unfortunately, will not find anything that I can create the holes off of. It's, it's a weird tool. I don't know why it works this way. If I view the sketch and I try to make the holes from these points in the sketch, it will assume that I want to run from those holes directly, and I don't. I want to project them to the other side of the solid. It's so strange the way this works. If I, do, if I try to move the other direction, use the other direction tool, and then I make them countersunk, it will countersink this top end. It'll countersink the top end, and I can't, I can't turn the screw around to the other side. So I'm going to hit cancel on that. Um, what is the cleanest way to do this? I mean, I guess I could do another sketch. It's like, even if I, so if I made a sketch here, I could use the extrude tool to get at the other side of these. The other thing that I could do is just measure them and, and do it that way. Yeah, or, or I can start a sketch on this surface, a third sketch, and then I can project it and, uh, and extrude it. What would I do without Zometrics telling me exactly what I'm about to say? Um, okay, anyway, so let me, instead of, instead of using the hole tool, let's go back to our original sketch, and let me just, let me just make this. I'll just make the countersunk holes, because it's not that important that I get that exactly right. As long as the whole centers are in the right place, that's all that I really want. So 3.43, so let's make that 3.5. Dual holes, use chamfer for the countersunk on the other side. Literally, like, fucking exactly, okay. I'm just, I'm just gonna 3.5. No, 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 no. 3.5. Hello? There it goes. Okay, finish. All right, that didn't confuse anybody. Look at the sketch. Hit extrude. Click the holes. Boom. And I, I can, if I really want to be a stickler for this kind of thing, I could actually make it uh, go cut and then the distance. Instead, I could just say all. And it'll do that, all right? So there are the two holes in the location that they should be. I, I would like it if you would backseat less, please. I'm actually requesting that from you. And then I give it a big old chamfer and it doesn't matter. And then we just, look at that. It looks like the right thing. Hope that's not a sarcastic smile. Uh, all right, so yeah, there's our object. Look at that. Hey, thank you for the follow. Um. So yeah, here is, here is our plastic piece looking like a piece of metal. So this is a, this is a, a, a plastic piece that I want it to look like plastic, just because. Um, the more it looks like the real thing, the more visually interesting this is. So this is my favorite menu in all of AutoCAD, and that would be the appearance menu. The appearance menu has all kinds of wonderful materials in it, including plastic. So we'll just go to opaque plastic, and then we'll choose not glossy. This would be a matte black plastic material. Drag it over, but ba bam, there we go. So now we got this thing in, here, let me close this window. We got this thing looking pretty accurate. The only thing that I could really do to make it more accurate would be to put in some of the, more of the chamfers and stuff, or put, uh, put HTTPL on the side of it, which boy, oh boy, do we not need that. Boy, oh boy, do we not need that.
Here we go. So, aside from the damage that I did to it, this is a pretty close representation of what we have. Camera one. Camera two. Are there any are there any subtle differences that we that we need to worry about here? I mean, aside from the fact that uh, there's there's just a slight difference in uh, the exact look of the material. What? Why is my focus not? To, oh, there it goes. Sometimes the focus doesn't respond. Um, yeah, aside from like the the plastic ejector circles that I'm not gonna model in, uh, I think I think this is a fairly straightforward part. Aside from the text. <laughs> Okay, cool. Now we've got that part in there. Well, in in putting the part in there, I lost the uh, I lost the height of this thing. I lost my way. Well, let's save this part. I hit, I hit Control S. I don't know what happened. Save the part, and then go to the actual cart itself. Now, so far, the cart itself does not have anything on it. I've got a bunch of random objects sitting in space representing what the cart is eventually going to look like. And I could model the, the, the axis rail on this and the limit switches on this as well, but um, maybe, maybe we'll do that in a little bit, uh, just so that I know the heights of stuff, so that I don't run into everything. But that, that maker beam rail really curses the rest of the drawing. Uh, it, it makes it absolutely difficult, like, it makes it very difficult to do extrusions because it's got, like, 10,000 surfaces. This maker beam beam that I've got, that was the wrong, that was the wrong drawing that I opened up. This thing that I got off of the internet, this beam right here, hard to see, but each one of these individual little surfaces here is, like, confusing AutoCAD. It makes it very difficult. Does it save locally or to the cloud? I think it saves to the cloud. Uh, and then you need to, if you want to, or, or feel the need to, you need to back it up, which it makes um, Eagle kind of a nightmare because you've got like 10,000 parts sitting in, in like a database um, and you constantly need to be organizing it in order to make any sense of it. I need to spend like an afternoon just putting uh, good parts with good 3D models in it into Fusion uh, in order to get everything together and the workflow for that process needs a lot of work and i don't know if they're doing anything about that the workflow for getting a part into the cloud properly and then getting it assigned to one of your parts and then not having a thousand files sitting in, in your directories that's tough um i don't know it's it's been tough and i i read a comment section where somebody's like well i thought it was intuitive it's like yeah but literally everybody else is complaining about it Anyway, so this is the cart so far, so let's get our new cart so far. So let's get our new part in here. So that's the belt bracket. Bop. Bam. There he is. I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to flip it around. And actually, no, I did this completely wrong. I did this completely and utterly wrong, and it's completely unforgivable. Uh, and nobody will, ever, nobody will ever be the same ever again. Uh, okay, so I'm inserting this part into my drawing, but the thing is... I need to keep this this organized. Fusion 360 works on a timeline. A timeline. Anyway, the timeline is super important. You need to constantly keep that in mind while you're working on your parts. So my insertion of this part, in addition to my designing the initial platen last time we streamed this, I was I was making like I, I made like a block, and I figured that I would machine everything out of the block using Fusion. That doesn't really like that that's kind of poison for your part eventually because as i move stuff in here i've got these different areas where things are actually being uh, locked into place so i think what i need to do is i'm just going to get rid of this sketch we're going to pretend that never happened um and then when i get my parts in here i need them to come in at a certain point and then get locked into place i don't know if i can move this over here i, I wish i could combine these two steps but i have a feeling if i get rid of one of these steps it'll throw this part into a weird place. But really what I should be doing is every time I insert my parts, I should insert them back here and then go to this step and position them. Because then they'll be given a, a place to exist where things won't move around. See, this one is just for that piece right there. And I know that that one is, well, it was 30 millimeters from where it started. 
What's the hmm, what's the center to center distance of these two? Because I'll I'll redo the copy operation if I need to. So there's 20 millimeters apart, and the distance of them is. Can I inspect from the center? No, not really. Okay. 40 millimeters. So. So they're 40 millimeters apart. So if those are 40 millimeters apart, I can get rid of this step. Yep, see, and then it moves it back over there. So now I'm gonna go back in the timeline. Ooh, ooh, that moved everything. <laughs> A lot of the positions are based on this, so I gotta be careful about that. Oh yeah, that's right, no, I'm not doing that. I'm double clicking on this, and now I can move this. So, uh, duh, 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 move component, move object, yeah. From, and let's go point to point, Let's try to find the center of this. Do you, do you not like that anymore? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't let me find the, okay, all right. That. There it is, point to point. And then go to this, go over like that, 40 millimeter. Oh, it was 60. Wait, it was 20 in between, 40 for the whole thing, which would mean, yeah, 60. Like that. Click OK. And now I can finish the positioning, and now my drawing is safe. So when I move this into position, we're going to go back into this step here and make sure that it goes in properly. That's how I gotta insert parts into this from now on. I need to be particular about that. Otherwise, as I work on the drawing further down the line, I could be like, oh, I don't like where this thing on the sketch is. And then I go back to that sketch and it takes me to an earlier version of that sketch. It's really frustrating like that, but when you learn how it works, uh, it works out really well. So <sighs> I'm getting there, folks, I'm getting there. All right, so, so the next piece that we need to do, we need to figure out where this thing is gonna sit. Um, and that's actually a very particular position. Very particular position. Oh, my thermals look weird right now. Burning question that's off topic, but it's bugging me. Uh, is it gonna be like if a train leaves the station in Chicago at, at 12 a.m. and... <laughs> uh, go ahead and ask, it's all right. All right, so let's see. We have this thing. I need to make sure that I know where it is. Maker related. What's a Mata? I mean, if I'm a little busier than right now, I won't be able to answer questions like that, and I would relegate that to the Discord, but... An actual helpful set of helping hands? No. Um, not, in my, not in my opinion, no. I use a vice. I use a miniature machine vise. Problem is, uh, this is kind of a precision piece of equipment that'll set you back hundreds of dollars. Don't buy one of these. I found one of these. Uh, what I would be using instead, there are clamps that hold on to circuit boards that hold it from the edges. I would be using something like that. I don't think it was a palm grin then, if you found it for $70. All right, so this is my modified bracket. So I need to figure out where these holes are based on this and this can actually move up and down a little bit it doesn't really matter all that much um, but the position of this should be pretty much where this part of the bracket is because otherwise um, this won't lay down into the angle iron that i put up properly that angle iron's a little heavy for the task if i really wanted to min max this man i would you know take gonad's suggestion of using um flat cables and then uh, use lighter materials on a lot of these parts I mean, I guess you could mill slots in a vice. I don't know. That's just something that I have that happens to do really well for me. Um, I, and also, if you've already got a mill, <laughs> I don't think you're asking. I don't think you're, uh, I don't think you'd be asking me what the best thing for uh, an alternative to helping hands is. All right. Um, yeah. So I've already measured the height of these things to an approximate height. We know this is 10 millimeters. We can just measure the height of this thing over here. I have a feeling I'm going to have to make like two brackets of this 
Um, I guess we'll go 10 millimeter off the base plus whatever height these offsets are. I don't, I don't know what height I used for the offsets. 5.7. Could you just be a normal, you just be a normal number? Why are you like this? Also, what's the bend radius of this thing? I would like to keep that in mind too. This is actually fairly close to the bend radius. Actually very close to the bend radius. But I don't know the height of the bend off of the off of the cart. Well, maybe we keep it at this height. This is actually pretty good. <laughs> Try to actually get a shot of this. There are better versions of the helping hands too that people use and love. Better versions of the helping hands. I could try to... Would this mount this way and still function properly? Hold on. Check. Yeah. I could mount it, like, like from the top. That actually will make 3D printing it... Uh, so I can print this whole thing as one piece. That actually works a lot better. Okay. All right. All right. Well, the thing is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be placing this down, and then I need something up here to catch it, because otherwise... It does this, and that's bad for me. Another thing I could do is have it bolt down and then have something up over this section just to just to flatten it out. Keep it tied down uh, so it doesn't it doesn't fly up as it's moving back and forth. It looks like it really wants to be ten millimeters off of the base platen. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that. Because like if I here. I mean, the unfortunate thing is that I will be replacing all of the Maker Beam with 3D printed stuff, and although you can change the parameters of the 3D print very easily, um, Maker Beam is ultimately so much more flexible. So, so much more flexible in terms of arranging and rearranging where your solids are and, you know, where the stuff connects and all that fun stuff. So we'll be giving something up by doing a 3D printed plate for this uh for this this axis but in doing this i will at least have everything mounted correctly so yeah you can see here that 10 millimeters is, is a-okay for this stuff and millimeter and then i need something to like something to hold that there so i could do like a bracket over here but this is going to be a very long piece. Anyway, I didn't model the, the link sections. I guess that wouldn't be too hard now that we know a lot of the other a lot of the other parameters of this thing. I could technically model the link sections, but I really don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to do that. This is not supposed to be that comprehensively modeled. So we'll take 10 millimeter off of the base plate and we'll punch that into CAD. Oh. And then the distance from the cart. I'm not going to be able to do it that way. Distance from cart. Well, it's going to have to do it this way. This is very approximate, though. 35? It's not like I can get a good edge over there. Can get all the way out here. Here to here. The distance from the front of the cart is... 59 millimeters. 60 is too far. Actually, 58. 58 millimeter from the front of the cart to the very front of this stuff. Ah! All right, so let's uh, let's move that into position. So I will take this piece and let's rewind. Actually, let's double click on that so that we're in this step. So this is me uh, about to lock everything in place. So now I'm gonna go to move, select the object, 
uh, I can, I guess I can select it anywhere. It doesn't matter because I'm going to go point to point and I'm going to go from this leading edge right here. Uh, I hope that's right. And go to the center of the front of the cart. What's a good line that I can use for that? I guess I could use this. Go there. Okay. So now I need to go back to my generic move and I need to move this 58. Oh, and then I need to make the height off of the top piece. How am I going to do that? That ain't going to work. Hold on. Um, how do I move it in just the one axis and so that it aligns with the... All right, let me, let me try this. So I could use a line? No. Modify, move type, select this object. Uh, and then I need to move it up so that those two pieces are in the same thing. That's not really going to work out. The align tool can probably do something like this. Um, <laughs> just trying to think of how I'm going to do this. I mean, I could use... I could measure that distance. But, like, see, that's off by a little bit. That's off by a little bit. I don't have, like, a good leading edge of this thing. So. don't have a good leading edge. It's center the... No, that's not going to work. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could measure this stuff out. What does the align tool do for me? Component. You. From selected to selected. That's all that does is... Oh, did that... Yeah, that just aligned it. Okay. Hey. I don't... <laughs> I'm not going to question... I'm not going to question things that worked out for me there. I don't know why. Maybe because I chose plane to plane, it didn't move it in that other axis. Well, that's, a, that's exactly the feature that I was looking for and I did not expect to find. All right, back to a generic move. Doesn't matter where I select that, as long as my axes are lined up uh, on, on origin. And then I'll take it up 10 millimeter. Now that's in position. So I'm going to lock that in. Finish. The only, the only issue that I would have with this is that maybe I want to move... Oh, wait. Yeah, I did that wrong. I want to I wanna spin this around. I want it to mount the other way around. <laughs> so this needs, to be, this needs to be spun on, I guess, the axis that goes through there. That's going to misalign everything. I don't really have a good axis to spin this on. Son of a bitch. I'm going to have to go through all these move steps again, aren't I? All right, let's go back to here. Let's select this thing. Move, you, spin, what's the axis? Uh, you know, I, I, would love to, I would love to be able to tell you what the axis is. Actually, wait, if I choose this move and I choose the, well, now it's just choosing it for me. Yeah, I don't want it to spin there. I want it to spin on one of these. So, hold on. There we go. Reselect the, the this center right here. Actually, if I do it on the front edge, that's fine too. Front edge like that, and now it'll spin on that axis 180 degrees. All right, there we go. So that's where that's gonna be. Man, that's way out there, isn't it? <laughs> that is way out there. I guess it's got some stuff to dodge on its way out. Finish position. Okay, so we've got our stuff. All our stuff in here, except for the circuit board, which has to weirdly be layered on top of everything in spite of it all. <laughs> so we need to make the circuit board for this model. Um, two ways that I could go about doing this. I can make it look like a box. I could just make a box and that'll be the circuit board and we can settle with that and just, just deal with it the way it is. Or I can actually create a circuit board in Fusion Eagle that will represent the laser driver. And seeing as I probably will need this part down the line uh, in order to drive Burn the Subs 3, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I don't need to re redesign the entire driver board for the laser if I'm going to be using the exact same laser in the exact same way. The only thing that I could really change is uh, trying to eliminate that ground loop. And maybe I'd do that with an optical isolator or something like that uh, on the control board. But, but eh, it ain't broke. Let's not fix it. I'm going to make a circuit board. I mean, I told you there would be a lot of yak shaving today. I don't know why you're surprised. Uh, all right. Save. Back in here. 
So I guess, all right, how are we doing this? How are we doing this? Because I might need, I think I have all the parts that I need in the basic Fusion Eagle 360. So I probably should do this in another folder just so that I can make it clean. Because there's going to be a lot of files that I'm generating off of this thing. So I'm going to do a new folder, and then I'm going to do a uh, laser driver PCB, like that. So laser driver PCB. So let's, uh, let's get rid of some of the excess here. I could really, I really could move this stuff into the drawing just to make sure that I don't, like, interfere with clearances and stuff. No, I'll leave it alone. I'll, I don't want to, I, I don't want to, I told myself I wouldn't 3D model the entire burn the subs too because it's the it's the old one right driver for the laser made out of uh yeah yeah it's something like that i think we looked at it i think we looked at it briefly but it's got a couple different things going on um first of all this thing takes in 12 volts and it turns it into a constant current source for a laser uh and then it also takes in ttl voltage so it's got a couple different regulators going on at the same time one of them is to adjust the amount of current of the laser and then the other one is to adjust, I think, the sensitivity to TTL signals that are coming in. So there's a bunch of current monitoring and heat monitoring, and there's all kinds of whistles and bells on this thing. This is a fairly common part. You can actually get this uh, from a, a bunch of different uh, manufacturers, that it's all the same design, right? This is for the board on my wall. Uh, it's a subs board. It's called Burn the Subs, BTS. I was probably the, uh, probably the better use of that acronym. Um, but yeah, Burn the Subs is a board on my wall. It's a giant plank of maple. Uh, traditionally, it has been that. Uh, only this time, it's actually going to be a live edge board. And in order to accommodate the live edge board, I'm improving little things here and there on the actual board itself. So right now, we're working on the actual cart for the laser's axis, which is a lot of... It's a culmination of a lot of different parts that need to be held in place very nicely. So I'm going to 3D print it. Um, yeah, I don't have a command like that. I don't have a command like that. Um, it's a culmination of a bunch of different parts that I need to, to come together in order to make... Uh, what? Um, in order to, to make everything move back and forth properly and, and routinely and safely and with repetition, repeatability, and all that fun stuff. Um, but once we're done hardware, we'll work on software. There's only a couple little things that I need to do software. Software, uh, what we're doing is we are taking the size of the names and we're locking it down to one size so that we don't get so many damn questions about why the name the size the names are sized the way they are the board is art making itself so we need to keep it artistic right um i i made two different sizes for the fonts biggest problem seems to be font and spacing yeah 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 we haven't looked at that yet um the the spacing of the fonts has its own system of determining that and I've already got an idea of what we're going to do to correct that. Uh, I think the problem with the old one, if it had anything to do with the limit switches, we've updated the limit switches. So we'll take a look at the software because uh, the software has no problems with where everything is placed. I think a lot of the mechanical stuff, like the rails not being greased and the, uh, the limit switches not being as reliable as they could be, I think those are what affected the old one. Hey, Code Rush, how you guys doing? What were you guys working on today? I want to know what Code Rush was doing. What was Code Rush doing? How you guys doing, man? I've been poking my head into Code Rush every now and then. Um, yeah, anyway. Awesome stuff as usual. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so we're trying to get all of the stuff positioned on this axis. Part of this whole project is that I'm locking down. I'm locking down a lot of the stuff that made the other burn the subs work a little bit weirdly. And I'm trying to keep it at like minimal updates because I'm trying to get it running again. Now it's been like a month or two since burn the subs filled up. 5,500 names over 2.6 years uh, is a lot. And sort of I'm trying to put my best foot forward in improving everything so that we have a little bit of a stop gap between now and Burn the Subs 3. So I can actually work on other projects on this channel. Um, I have very nice motors and stuff that'll go into Burn the Subs 3, but we need to finish up some of the access tests that we were doing and stuff. So I need, I need more time. I need more time. And I also want to complete other projects. There's a hair between my glasses and my face. There we go. All right. 
Yeah, I am. I am droopy eyed today. I uh, I don't know. I got an, I got enough hours of sleep, but I, I don't think I slept well. So I'm trying to trying to keep going. Nope. Uh, I have a better idea for how to do that. We'll get there. We'll get there eventually. But um, I want to use an Xbox controller in order to map out where the the live edge portions are. Um. Take enough fluids. Yeah, I think so. I had some big glasses of water. Probably could use more. I always could. All right. Um. This thing. The last component that we need to place on this, the one that's not in a locked position, something that we can move around wherever we need it to be, um, we need to figure out where that circuit board is going to be. That little circuit board is what controls the current to the laser. Now, I could relocate that circuit board and move it way the hell off and put it all the way back with the, um, with the control board, but I think that the length of the wiring is going to be a little bit detrimental. Um, this I could place directly next to the controller, and then I'd have a TTL signal going into this thing, and maybe I could tune this properly to pump out enough current on a long wire in order to power the laser. I figured this should probably be a little closer to the laser. That way you can run your digital signal over a long distance and that you, I don't know, less loss. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What would be the smarter bet there? Because one direction I need to have one direction versus BTS. Wait a minute. No, in one direction, like if I use, if I put DC all the way out there, I'd have one wire pair. Whereas if I put this all the way on the cart, then I have power and I have the TTL signal coming out to this thing. It's a debate, and I could probably run some numbers and figure out which one I want to do, but eh, instead I just put this thing out on the laser cart, because I figured it's light enough, it's light enough, and the laser's light enough and all that. Hell, I could put it on this axis. <laughs> I could put it here uh, somewhere. I don't think I have space for that. Put it, like, all the way at the bottom. Nah, nah. We'll continue with this thing on the axis if we can figure it out. Um, so, yeah, what I need to do is mount this to the axis itself, and I don't have Maker Beam anymore. So we need to make a circuit board that very simply displays the stuff that's on here, so I know where connectors are, and the screw holes. More importantly, the screw holes. So let's put together a pseudo circuit board that's going to perform this task. Now, I know I have capacitors. I don't know if I have that potentiometer. And I know I have the... Um... Whatever the hell connectors these are. JST connectors. I know I have those. So that'll be easy enough for us to put together. And we can make an approximation of what that circuit board looks like. So new uh, electronics design. I'm going to save that, and I'm going to call it Laser Driver Board. There's our Laser Driver Board design. Now, there's nothing associated with this thing. So first of all, we need to create a schematic, because even if it's just a placement uh, thing, it needs to have a schematic associated with it. That's how you add parts, and that's how you have parts that are associated with 3D models. So, new schematic. Let's go. Oh my god, there are so many windows around here. It looks like um, Metal Battalion when you first start playing the game. Um, that's okay. We don't need all this stuff. In fact, the design manager can go away and the inspector can go away. Um, they don't really expect you to have kind of like a square monitor layout with your dumb face sitting on the side. I do this this way because the shop is as much a character as I am. And um, we're often working on something physical here. And I, you know, I'll, I'll emote and gestate and do all that stuff. I could sneak this away a little bit. Uh, people who are watching on phones, which people do, I guess, won't really be able to see me. Um, you know, I'll get much smaller on the picture. And then, I don't know, there's just the whole thing about it. I could green screen myself into this. And then there would be a lot more workspace available. But I think, I don't know, I prefer this. If the output is constant current, it doesn't doesn't it mean how uh, it doesn't matter how long the cable is. It should force the same amount of current through it. Mm -mm. Uh, no, because uh, wire has resistance. V equals I R. I don't know. I don't know. All right. So there's nothing here. 
I don't like that. I, I, this is like existential dread, uh, having just an infinite blank sheet of paper to work on. So the first thing that I put down is something that I got from the SparkFun Eagle Parts Library from the days of old, and that is just a, a frame. It's, a, it's just a, a work frame that goes around your drawing, uh, and it'll have a little, little pieces of information on it for what you're designing. It helps, it helps kind of lock you into the 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper size. Hey, I can do I can do green screen. And then my hair would like disappear in it. Um Yeah, where is that? Where did I put that? I have I have my own like uh organized parts and everything from years ago. So <laughs> I need to I really need to re reproduce a lot of these libraries, but I should have one that says schematic. I don't. And there's also spark the spark fun ones directly, but where did the, where did the one that says schematic on it go? Chips, components, connectors, mechanical, LED, opto, blah blah blah. It's not directly called schematic. I think I think I need to add it. So library manager. These are the ones in the design, in use and available. Let's find the big block of ones that I named. There's a lot of available libraries. This whole interface, by the way, this whole interface needs a lot of work. This this whole thing could really use a lot of work. I would like to be able to organize my parts and create my own curated parts list more easily than this. And I think dragging and dropping or any of a number of other interfaces would be very nice to be able to use. There's a specific way that you put in a three-dimensional part and then get it associated with the pad, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that needs work. It desperately needs work. It does not. It's not intuitive. And learning learning how to quickly and functionally do it in this system, I think is a waste of time because this needs updating. But if that's gonna be the way it is, then I'm gonna to need to, to, to be able to learn it in this system. It took, it was a lot of stumbling in order to get this right. So where's J? I, J. What the, what the heck? What happened to my like schematic one? Is it gone? <laughs> if it's gone, I'm gonna have a little bit of a shit fit here. I can open up another another um Oh really? Okay. I can open up another uh one to see which one I used. Cause if I got it from Spark Fun, I don't I don't know. Hold on, let me cancel this. I'm a little confused here. Let me open up another another drawing that I did. So what did I do most recently? What did I make? Uh, but probably the RC car one, although this is kind of an extensive schematic, uh, but this would be the electronics. Any of these boards will do, but I'll open up, uh, I'll open up this design. And then we'll open up the, it's gonna open up everything. So I'll have a thousand things open now. There's the schematic. Ah! Uh, I guess yes. I don't. I don't know what that's all about. I haven't opened it in a while, so it's having a. It's having a time. All right. So where's my schematic? That's the physical board layout. That's the board in three dimensions. Okay, I'll just double click on the picture. <laughs> it's easier to find that way. All right, so there's there's a more complicated design. This is not what we're making today. We're trying to just make a, a frame for uh, mounting parts on that'll that'll resemble something in the real world. But right now I'm looking at this because something happened with my library and I don't know what. So I want to place a part. So let me place a part and then look at, maybe I am just using their symbols. Cause it doesn't look like I, I had a library that was just the um, chips, components, connectors, mechanical, LED, opto, PCB fastener, hardware, 
Yeah, that's weird. Cancel. What is what is this part here? That part is actually anchored here. Frame one. Look at look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Schematic. Version one. Where is that? <laughs> this fucking interface. This fucking interface. It's here. Jesse, 2018, schematic, version 1. Cancel. Alright, so I'm going to close this design before I ruin it by having it open. Yeah, let's go ahead and not save anything that I've done. Please, please don't save. <laughs> please don't. I don't I don't have the wherewithal at the moment to, to go through that whole thing. All right. Um I know it's in the uh, the void. The void. Like search skim uh attic component spark fun aesthetics hardware switches blah 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 blah. Okay. So get rid of the search. Let's take a look at the library manager. Nothing should be in the design. Fetching library updates. In use. Chips, component, connectors, connectors, mechanical, LED, opto, etc. Available. Ugh, I gotta find J. Ugh, E, F, J, I, J. Components, Johansson, jumper, jumper. What the f I don't understand where my stuff went. It's like... I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. The other one had it, and then it just decided to delete all of my stuff. That's kind of an important, uh, at least in terms of like new designs, that's kind of an important library to have. Browse. Uh, all right. Uh, oops. No, 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 no. Uh, let's do. I mean, could it be? Am I not logged into the? No, I should be. Should be logged into the thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, that would be projects stream. I don't even know if this is the right version, but Eagle 2018 schematics. I don't know why I had to do that. Maybe maybe the the file server wasn't plugged in properly one time. That's so weird though. So weird. All right, so done. All right. Maybe I clicked remove on it somewhere and that, that's what did it. But yeah, this is kind of an important one because when I'm putting stuff in here, I like to put stuff in a frame letter and these are from Spark Fun. So I mean, I could make my own frame letter and place them in, but I appreciate having, you know, not having to think about the existential dread of the void um, when I'm placing my parts. So I have a nice little frame around everything. And this will put under, you know, all your creative commons and put the title of it in the design if you do the right one. I think this is not the, the one that I'd like to use. I think I need to use the other one. Anyway, whatever, uh, we're, we're not really making a full circuit board here. So what we need to do is select the parts. So first off, I need to actually place down the connector. Uh, and you can see that I have two connector libraries and I don't know which one is which. I think they both contain the same stuff. One of them is more updated than the other one. Like this one has one audio three and a half with, with an actual good 3D model. This one has two. That one doesn't have a model. So this is the old one. I don't know what to do about it because they got the same name. I don't know which one to, to delete. Uh. One day the electronics interface in Fusion won't suck ass and I'll be very happy. Unlike the day when I use KiCad. Uh, instead, <laughs> oh yeah, well, I, I really hope they, I hope they have a concerted effort to clean this up because I feel like they're in a situation that's very much like what they teach you in, what they teach you when you first start being a consultant is they say, one of the big things that we have to deal with is um, a corporation's culture being like impenetrable, right? They do things the way they do things and they think that that's right because that's the way they've always done things. And so you need to learn the way that they do things in that specific manner, even though it's wrong or, or in, incredibly inefficient. But 
it's like it's like that that institutional uh you have to fight against the institutional like whatever it is institutional knowledge um it's it's bad and and i feel like the people who make eagle probably think that their whole process of making a three-dimensional part is totally fine with their their whole library thing being totally fine um and i don't i don't really think that's the case i think it really needs a a severe revision i i would like a more intuitive way to assign 3d models to parts everything else institutional inertia that's a good way of putting it Everything else about the program is great because I can make a, a three-dimensional PCB that looks gorgeous, right? Aside from the fact that if you do a circle, it fills in the middle of the circle. You can't do a trace that's a circle. We ran into that with this. We tried to render this, the, the slip ring that we made for the steering wheel, which works. Uh, but uh, when you make these, these, these circular traces, it fills in the middle. What? Eagle's fine. I really like it. <sighs> yeah. You can complain about a thing and still, you know, think it's the better solution. <laughs> let's just let's just set that out right now. Hey, PNS. Um. All right. So I need JST. No, not that one. High Rose. No, not that one. Uh, connector specific. I guess maybe these are generic. Where are my generic connectors? How come those aren't on there? Oh, maybe I have another library with JSTs in them. Interface, linear logic, wireless inductor, spark funds are kind of useless. They don't have anything in them. I think maybe there's another library that I should be using here. Or the JSTs end up in here. No. Other JSTs did. Like, and then the high rows did too. Do I actually have a good model of a JST? If I don't, then we're going to have to go through the ringer on this one. Oh, that's right. I use these in some cases. Although that is really not a good example. I think that one's close though. XH. Yeah, this is the XH horizontal. That one's the better model. This one is off by a little bit, I think, from the pads. Hey, thank you for the gift sub. This is just a gifted sub to Legoland. God. No, thank you. Acetate film and a Sharpie. No. <laughs> I refuse. Um, yeah, did I have? Did I ever have a good JST uh, connector in CAD? I feel like I did. I feel like I did. I feel like I made a whole circuit board with them. We'll try this, the B2B XHA. Um, it's, it's interesting because I can go in and I can edit the part. I think I have to edit... I have to edit this part, and then it should project this onto this drawing. Um, and I think that all the times that I tried to edit the coloration of it to make it look more like a normal JST, it like didn't take the revision for some reason. No, it's, I'm not, I'm not interested in, in reinventing the wheel right now. I know I have these parts in here. Um, yeah, I, I haven't, I don't, I don't know if I have an account with easy EDA. I'm not sure. And then, and then importing it is a pain for Eagle. I need to spend, I need to spend like a week or a month just making my libraries work for me again. <laughs> it sucks, but once I have that built up, I'll, I'll be good. It's just right now, things are a little disorganized. So yeah, uh, anyway, all right, let's use that. And we've got three of these. Cool. Three of them. There we go. Oh no, we got four. Okay, now we got four of them. All right, next part would be the, uh, the DC plug. Now I don't have I don't I didn't find one of those and, and isolate it. So um, what I'll need to do is just find a good DC plug. Now these things grow grow blah, 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 blah. these things grow on trees, right? Everybody everybody knows about the DC jack. Actually, wait, do I have JSTs in here? Not quite. No. Oh yeah, this is where I got the other one from. Okay, that one has an error in it. It's not good. Oh, look at that. 
I just found a DC plug by clicking on random stuff. That one is not through hole. It doesn't really matter that much that it is. Uh, it looks like there's two of them. They're not, yeah, they're okay. Those aren't DC jacks. I really hate it when they have everything. Oh yeah, and there's the, uh, there's the headphone cable jack too. This is some other library that I downloaded. Some other connector library. But yeah, the, um, the DC jacks that they have, I love, I, I really, like, man, when they say description companies, they don't mean just, like, put your part number in there. They actually want a description so that you can find what it is and put the actual, uh, look at how blue that thing is, jeez, and put the actual part in. Let's see if we got a better one than that, because uh, that wasn't very good. It's not a D-sub. Oh, a lot of cool D-sub connectors in here. Uh, USB, diode, LED, filter source, fuse, uh, ICs, inductors, LEDs, optoelectronics, fasteners and hardware. We don't need power symbols. Blah, 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 blah. Switch transformers and tutorials. Do they use a DC plug in their tutorial? Doesn't look like it. Uh, and then let's see. Audio devices? Nah. Those are all microphones. Capacitor. It's not a circuit connector. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I really am tempted to just blow away the, the, the default library for Fusion and just start from scratch and pull in individual components that I like to use uh, and then just have that as my library. And one day I'm going to do that. One day soon I'm going to do that because if it gets down to PCB design again, I'm going to really want to... Um, have everything exactly the way that I like it uh, and know what's there. It's unfortunate that I have to do that uh, and it's going to be very painful to do because Eagle's system is convoluted at best. But anyway, DC jacks are, are common enough that we can just go to a generic connector on this thing. I'm not, you don't even know what we're doing. You're just throwing, throwing stuff out. Okay, so this connector specifically, we're gonna use this, it's the surface mount, surface mount design, which means it's gonna have the little wings on the end, which uh, we actually might not be able to use. Having the little wings on it means that it's not quite gonna fit. This is like the most generic DC jack that you could possibly have. It's actually kind of embarrassing that uh, Eagle Fusion Eagle doesn't come with a model of it, because this is the like one of the most common power power input connectors out there. I mean, they've even got like weird surface mount ones that have like two wings on it, but they don't have like the generic through hole one. That's embarrassing, Eagle. That's embarrassing. That's like not having a resistor in your in your paddock of parts. Well, one thing I could do is I could look for it on, I have a feeling that this plug, <laughs> I wonder, I wonder if their auto chip making, um, thing has these as, as one of the categories. Let's, uh, I want to check this out, but this is going to get confusing fast. So if I go to the library manager and let's open up one of my Specific connectors, hit edit. That's going to open up the library editor. This is just going to get more and more confusing. I'm sorry, chat. Oh my god. Uh, if I push changes, shit might go all weird. Yeah, this is where I'd look for the different parts that I'd want to make. Um, or I could make a new one. So if I do a new... I just want to try to do a new three-dimensional design, and I want to see if they've just got the D sub connector over here. Ah, I thought they did. It doesn't look like they do. Snap lock. No. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, like these are, these are just so generic, all these parts. You can make a lot of stuff in electronics with these simple things. Uh, the other way to do it would be to find a 3D model somewhere, or an actual like full part somewhere. No, well with um with input and output connectors, it's actually really good to to not do surface mount for I/O. 
Um, for IO, I, I don't like the trend of everything going surface mount on like, like a USB connector, right? Who's the sister? Thank you for another gifted sub. It's Mr. Ed takes. Um, these names are going to go on a list and it'll get shuffled. And those will be the first names to go up on the new board. It's the names that came in in between. There's going to be a lot of names. It's going to be a lot of names going up. So we'll have to, we'll have to figure that out specifically how to, you know, hopefully the new board isn't completely, completely filled with names. Um, yeah, they're getting better and better at the anchors for, for through hole or sorry, for, for surface mount connectors. But if you have a hole through your board, the two, <laughs> as I sandwich, uh, another Twisted Sister gift sub. You have your board platen, and then you have the solder on the top and the bottom forming like a rivet, um, which is extremely strong. Uh, it's something that they've strayed away from because they're trying to fit as much electronics on as little board as possible, which is understandable, but I mean, even like people making, you know, little widgets like SparkFun are, I think SparkFun's be much better about that, but they're not giving enough um, real estate to the pads like the surface mount anchoring pads, and they're not considering doing a through hole there, which makes it so weak. And you end up trying to plug in for the first time to a USB connector, and none of none of the metal or the plastic in there has has been manipulated at all. So it's very stiff. And then, you know, your your whole connector just pops off of your board, which is kind of catastrophic. See, I was just seeing if we could generically make a a, a barrel connector. Since uh, we don't have to really worry about this so much, uh, and I can come back later and edit the part to make it the right thing, or I could just go on, um, oh, where would I do that? I mean, I could get the part off of GrabCAD and do it that way, or I could do something like Easy EDA. I don't know why I Googled it. Uh, da, 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 da. this is another one of those. This is like GrabCAD. When you open up GrabCAD, you're like, you're like, oh, it's a, oh, it's a manufacturing thing. I don't want that. That's not what I'm looking for. This isn't GrabCAD. What is this? Well, it turns out the library is right here. And now you have re everyone's resources. So in GrabCAD, I'm sure I could just go, uh, DC through hole barrel. Uh, that's not exactly the part. Actually, it's very close. It might be. It might be the right thing. So yeah, you can find that, and this isn't even like it's not typically for electronics. But yeah, a snap EDA is that okay? This is the one that you use. It doesn't work. <laughs> there it goes. Yeah, so that's pretty nice. Pretty nice, pretty nice. I'll have to check that out sometime. I just don't want a thousand logins of the thousand different ones of these little throwaway websites, you know? I, I just hate having to create more logins. I think the other way to do it is also, if you're looking for a very specific part, you just get it from Digikey. So I can look up DC barrel jack. And then, of course, Digikey is taking a sip of water through a fire hose. You look for stuff that's in stock, has a data sheet, a photo, and a CAD model, right? You narrow it down that way. And now suddenly I only have 45 different things. So power connectors. Yeah, why does everybody want my email so bad? It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. The problem with DigiKey service is that they also take you to a bunch of different websites that need logins and stuff. Yeah, would you search here? Okay, that's that's hard. That's that's weird. Ah! Get me out of here. Yeah, so that's a way to find these 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 components that you can use. I mean, this is I'm surprised that there's only one result that has this, but apparently it's got Data sheet now, data sheet symbol, footprint, 3D model. Yeah, and no sim a simulation. <laughs> um, yeah, so in DigiKey, I've got all the results that have pictures and 3D models. So I can take a look and figure out which one is closest to the one that's actually on this board. Or, or at least reasonably so. It'd probably be either of these two. 
I mean, it's a, it's a very generic part. It's, it's a very, very generic part. There's a thousand different versions of this thing. Some of them have holes in the bottom of it. Some of them don't. This one actually has the holes on there, which I like. Sometimes it links to Snap EDA. Sometimes it doesn't. It, it, has, it has various different uh, sources of the CAD models. The ones that I like are the ones that take you actually to the... Um, oh, this is that's just rich. That's just rich. They literally showed a 3D model as the picture. And they have none available from Ultra Librarian. Ugh. <laughs> that just means you need to redesign your board. If your one connector is the cost of the entire board, no way, man. You just need to figure out how to do that differently. It just sucks when you have to pay 75 cents for one connector. That's how much this thing costs. But this doesn't even have a CAD model. I don't understand. That is literally a CAD model. <laughs> That's not an actual photo. I don't think. Manufacturing CAD model. Those are usually better. The manufacturing CAD model is usually the better one. And sometimes, yeah, look at that. Sometimes you can get it without having to download or without having to um, make a login. Generate CAD? Yeah, that's going to make you log in. There might be a bug me not for it. We don't, need to, we don't need to go through all this trouble right now. As much as I would like to import this model and use it, um, I don't know how often I'm using DC barrel connectors. I like them. I'll definitely use them in the future, but uh, I'll have to go through all this rigmarole in the future. Hey, CosmoQuest X is rating with a party of 18. How's everybody doing today? How's space? Is it still there? Do they still dance <laughs> on the outside? Oh, my God. I'm, uh, we're trying to, we're trying to get a generic part together so that we can make the x-axis for the board. Because, uh, we, oh, Veronica Pure, the uh, Veronica Pure, thank you for the, the crime. <sighs> Veronica Cure, thank you for the prime. It's a day. I'm having a day. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm extremely tired for no reason. Probably because I slept too much. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, anyway, uh, Veronica Pure, thank you for the crime. Um, we're looking at uh, just like right now, I'm complaining about Fusion 360, right? Uh, which, which unfortunately, if I do, it means everybody comes out of the woodwork and starts talking about how their favorite CAD is better than me. Uh, which, fine, you use your programs. I'm going to use Fusion 360, but I'm going to continue to bitch about the complexity of getting a part into it. Um, anyway, uh, what I'm doing, what's that? <laughs> if you try to push 10 amps at 20 volts, one of those barrel plugs it'll start spitting sparks after about a minute uh we found that to be true about about the the brush dc motors the generic brush dc motors they do that too they start throwing sparks they're that's not on the data sheet they don't say that they're they're designed to throw sparks but there we go um it took about 50 volts for us to get it to stop throwing sparks um anyway do you have a lathe no uh <laughs> no i do not i don't have space for a lathe uh, how's it going, Cosmo Questers? What are we working on right now? Well, this is this is the y-axis. Let's back it up a little bit. This is my desk. This is a screwdriver. This is the y-axis of the um, laser etching table, quote-unquote, that I have on my wall. What I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to get this little cart right here that moves up and down, this little thing that wibbles up and down on the axis in order to burn the names of subs onto a big plank of maple. I'm trying to make this have a unified 3D printed part, a little thick piece of 3D printed material here is basically a base platen that'll mount everything in the appropriate locations. Previously, previously on Obother, uh, screaming. No, previously on Obother, um, I used this maker beam rail. And this is the kind of stuff that I was talking about during the, uh, the Hangout-a-thon, was having a, a strong, generic... Uh, reconfigurable uh, base material, something like a three-dimensional aluminum extrusion that you can have as your generic frame part, like so. It's just a simple little extrusion that you can sink screws into and attach stuff to other stuff. You can you can have this be sort of the generic building material that you you know you 
I don't know, send up to space. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get it away from the space example exactly. But you start with a generic building material, and as your application becomes more specific, you can supplement that with things like 3D printed plates in order to hold components in position. That has been the greatest asset that I've, or the, my best use of 3D printing to date uh, has been doing that. So we've got a limit switch here that's on a custom bracket that mounts to a strong base material that can then perform a, an advanced task. I thought that was the really cool part about 3D printing. Um, but it's hard. It's hard when there's three people on a conference call <laughs> to, to get a word in. Um, so anyway, there's some, there's some weirdness about the way that I've designed this. I've got one rail in the center here, um, and mounting the laser to that rail meant that the laser was able to wiggle around very quickly, I might add. Uh, so instead of having to like super duper tighten everything down, uh, I'm changing things. I'm changing the way that I'm mounting stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm using this uh, linear rod. It's just a, a rod holder. It's a rod holder. I need to order more of these because the old, the rods that, that were for this, I'm gonna turn into something for my saw. But this, this rod holder is really good at holding on to a little laser diode carrier. Now this doesn't have my super laser diode in it yet. And it probably won't get the one that was used in the old board. I'll probably put a new one in this. But that can mount at 90 degrees like this, and now I've got something that's going to very securely hold on to my laser, right? If I do that, I can then fix the height of this belt, because that belt is currently going up and then back down. It's like a little, it's like a little seesaw ramp or whatever going up and down on there. So I can fix that by making this a little bit less than 10 millimeter plus whatever the size of that cleat is. I can make that a little bit shorter and, and this stuff fit a little flatter. Then I can mount the drag chain to something that'll hold on to both screws and perhaps have a little bracket up here that'll hold it down. So that makes this a whole big piece of 3D printed stuff. And so, yes, I'm always looking for somebody to hold on to my laser at 90 degrees. Um, so that, that leads us, oh yeah, and in addition to that, in addition to that, we also have the circuit board that drives the laser itself, and that needs to go somewhere on there. Um, so what I've done is I've taken all these components, all the main, the main players in this whole thing, and I have taken them, uh, well, I've, I haven't really taken them anywhere. I've actually found models for all of this stuff. Actually, this one was so simple that I made a model for it. Uh, this I made a model for in AutoCAD as a separate part. The belt, I just found somebody else's model on a website. The drag chain does not have a 3D model. I looked everywhere for it because I didn't want to spend all the effort to create um, the model, and so we started off by creating this. Simple to do. Some of the stuff is wrong, like that That probably isn't right, that, that specific angle and everything like that. But I'm not going to be 3D printing screws for this thing, you know? And I already know the screws that I have, and this is a physical part. All I need to do is make sure that those hole centers are in the right spots, and that this piece itself is moved far enough away that when I mount it here, it will let go of the drag chain into an angle iron that I pretty much just like attached to the back end of this thing. So I need to just make sure that that distance, uh, that that distance stays the same and I can design around that. That's where we are with this. I've got almost all the stuff in here. I need to put this circuit board in, which provides its own set of issues. Cause like, I could just make this into a box with two holes in it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not happy with doing that. So what I'm doing is I'm making a generic circuit board. I don't need to know exactly the schematic that, that puts this thing together, but it is nice to get components in there like the potentiometer, which by the way, I'm gonna need a model for this for my, for my microphone. I'll need, to, I'll need to get some of those parts in. Uh, I could probably import a whole library of these things if I look properly. So I'll, I'll work on that later. We won't worry about that for now, but I need to get the connectors in there reasonably well. And I don't know, maybe a component or two. If I could find the capacitors, it'd be nice to know that something is so close to the screw hole, but then I need to measure out where the screw holes are and make sure that I get those right. So that's what we're working on right now. So we've been looking around at parts um, and just talking about various places to get what you're looking for. I often find that DigiKey is the best place to go because it'll lead you to the manufacturer's site um, and then you can, you can figure out how to wiggle your way around their login from there and actually get the three-dimensional part. 
or actually create 500 logins at 500 different like random websites that don't care about you and they just want your information. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, DigiKey allowing you to narrow down the search per parts that are available and have a 3D model. So you know it has a part number you can buy um, at least within the near future. But anyway, we're not, I'm not trying, I'm not gonna complicate that by trying to import those because it's always kind of a rough process to do. What I've done is I found a part that's just about the right thing. Um, and it's just, it's just in the generic connectors that are included with, with Eagle CAD, which really I should, I should get rid of this and, and remake all these libraries. Cause like there are some problems, like look at how blue that part is. That's, that's a problem. That is a problem. So yeah, anyway, up here, somewhere around here, there we go. We have just like these generic like through hole versions of, or sorry, surface mount versions of these parts. This isn't exactly the right thing, but I figure it'll be about the, the right size. Lost algorithm, buzz buzz. Thank you, man. Thank you for the 38 months. Appreciate that. That's real nice. That's real good on you. All right, so I'm gonna use a generic one. I can, you know, there's, there's probably a chance that I could find one. Um, I guess I guess Eagle was still gonna do integration with library.io, but then they locked off everybody's library.io. So I don't really know what happens with that. I could probably search it in library.io and find the right part. But we use something that's close enough. Near enough, this makes no difference, right? So let's see, let's see what other stuff we have. Everything else we have from now on is optional. I know I've got capacitors though. Not in here, although. Yeah, they, they have some of them in here. Maybe that's what I use traditionally. What did I use? Do I have over here in components? Capacitors. All right, so we've got chip capacitors. We don't need those. Polar. We've got the chip sizes with no 3D model. Yeah, no 3D models on those. Yeah, see, like, I need to go through and I need to, to edit these so that they're actual good parts. So we'll go over to the 3D modeled ones. I don't really know what sizes these are. I don't have I don't have measured dimensions of these things. I could measure the barrel on this thing and that might help tell me what size it is. It's got an eight millimeter barrel. Body size, 10 by 10. Do I have a diameter? 10 by 10 millimeters. So that would probably be the base plate. This one is seven by seven. So I would settle for an eight and a half. So that's that's one of the capacitors. Let's put another one down. Although maybe getting them from the metric sizes would be a better idea. <laughs> that's still eight and a half though. That's weird. That's the smallest one I have. Okay. All right. All right. Not very good. Yeah, these parts libraries are not good. We got one of the capacitors in there. I guess I don't have the other one. <laughs> Let's see if we can find the potentiometer. I would be I would be shocked if it doesn't exist on this light. I'm shocked. I'm shocked they don't have it. They just have surface mount stuff that they wanted to show off. That's unfortunate. It is one of the more common instrumentation uh, adjusting potentiometers out there. Oh, wait, no, here they are. Here they are. We found them. <laughs> PV36 is apparently the magic word. So yeah, there it is. So let's put that in there. Very common parts. Okay, so now we have all of the stuff that's going to make up our circuit board. I don't need to connect anything to anything because I don't know what the hell is here. This thing is way more complicated than, than, than just the sizing guide. Here, look. Uh, I meant to go to this camera. Look at all this stuff. I don't need to reverse engineer all this crap in order to make this thing happen. I can just put a generic uh, amount of stuff in there in order to make sure that the sizing is right. I didn't even look at coils. Probably should look at coils, although that would be more measuring. And the only problem that I have is that this right here is such a tight tolerance that uh, I'm going to have pins sitting over the edge of the board when we go to render the board. Which I, you know, hey, we'll just deal with that, right? 
So yeah, you can get you can get as detailed as you want with this kind of thing, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put all this onto just a generic sizing form. So so now that we've got all the parts in there, I guess what I can do is just flip over to the PCB. And now we're just going to get a bunch of nonsense on the screen. Uh, that, most of that nonsense is like the inspection stuff. And I guess the, on my copy, they start uh, maximized. So get these out of the way, and then I finally have room to work. Now the grayed out PCB area, and I think part of what I did is in order to um, be able to see where stuff is, I think it changed some of the color palettes that it was using. But uh, yeah, we've got just this generic PCB size sitting there. Let's make that into the right dimensions. Um, I have a feeling that my grid is in inches right now. No, it's actually in millimeters. Okay. So that's fine. The grid isn't going to matter too much because we're actually just going to be punching in numbers manually. We're going to be punching in like wherever the centers of the parts are and everything like that. We'll drag them near to where they go. But um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look here. Let's try this out. So we got 29 by 50. That's easy enough. 2950. So 160, 100. So 100 becomes 50. 160 becomes 29. And it was like exactly 29, too. Properties. So that becomes 29. There's the size of her circuit board. I guess I made it vertical instead of horizontal. Uh, cell phone users, rejoice. Uh, let, me, let me reverse those, actually. <laughs> 50, 29, 29. And do this one. Probably could just edit that line, but whatever. Um, 50, 29, 50. Oh, dear God, what did I do? Control-Z. There you go. <laughs> okay, so there's our board. There's our board. Now we just have to place the stuff. Uh, and then the thing is, like, in the 3D model, that's actually where you put the hole. It's strange. It's strange the way it works. I hope those parts are going to be in alignment, too, because I had a lot of trouble with that model the last time I used it. All right, so this thing is facing around in the other direction. It does have a little bit of a border around the part. Yeah, that'll go like that. And it's actually quite close to the edge. I'm going to hit Control, or is it Alt? Yeah, Alt does the, the alternative grid. Uh, and then that part is down here. Doesn't matter where the text is. We're not trying to make the, the text come exactly onto the, the right spot. Uh, I'll put another one of these connectors in the bottom corner. That. With the outside facing outside the board. This is the DC barrel jack. I don't know which end is facing forward, so I'll just try it like that. And then that is not aligning with anything. Hello? Hello? What the f What the deuce? What is this? Oh my god. No, stop it! Alt. There are... So sometimes it'll apply design rules to the stuff as you're positioning it. Um, what is probably happening here is that it's... It's really averse to having that trace be over the edge. Because it'll cause weird stuff with the drawing. So there's like a certain keep out distance from the edge of the board where it won't allow traces. And this needs to be right up against it. So that's a problem. You might have problems with that. I'll leave it like this for now. Uh, that's not quite accurate, but it'll be all right. So then we have two connectors up here. Where'd it go? Two connectors up here. And which way are they facing? They're facing down like this. So hit the Alt key, get my Alt spacing there, and just do a generic amount of distance from the edge. Remember, this is, this is very representative of what's there. It's not exact. Good enough. The big cap goes right next to the JST over here. Yeah, see, it won't let me get any closer to the edge of the board than that. There's, that's, that's part of the design rules, and I don't really want to edit the design rules. That's a problem. I don't know if you can individually disable them, like, selectively. I, don't, I would have to go into the DRU and change that, and I really don't want to do that. You know? I don't want to change it. The reason I don't want to do it is because it's like, if I change it, I'll forget that I changed it, and then I'll go to design a board, and I'll run the design rule check, 
And you're like, oh, I need to, I need to put in seed specific design rules. And I'll do that and it'll be like 10,000 errors. All your parts are too close to the edge of the board. And they're like, oh no. And then you're down like 16 hours of work on a board. So unfortunately, I don't think there's like a shortcut, but I could try to actually like place it like the position on the, on the axis. Maybe I could do 3.5. I don't even, I don't even see where that moved. Four, maybe five. Nope. It's it's resetting the number. Yeah, see. <laughs> I got it to no oh, no, that puts it at 3.5. Yeah, so that's it. that's what it's doing. It's definitely running into the um running into the edge properties of the the PCB. That sucks. I'd have to uh, maybe if I find a proper model of that thing, which is trivial. I can do that very easily. I just don't want to do it right now. Any more parts? Just the Creative Commons text that I'm not going to include. Um, okay, so there's our there's our sizing form. Now I can place the holes here. I think I could I could actually oh yeah there you go hole. I could add a hole from here. I could add a part that represents a screw hole, or I can do it in the 3D model. The 3D model makes you point out the x and the y from the edge of the board um so we'll do that we'll do that so let me um yeah i guess we'll go to the three-dimensional board now so click on the three-dimensional board part now autocad is going to create a pcb platen and then place the parts upon it and that gives me this wonderful laser driver board and actually what i want to do hold on let's go back to the 2d pcb real quick we got the 2d pcb and let me do uh ba 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 I am going to go to uh document and then I'm going to put text draw text but the layer that I'm going to put it on is uh t place cuz that's the placement layer that's the layer that where all of your uh Electronics components get their, their package outlines. So if I put that on there, that's going to be rendered. Uh, it's going to actually be part of the silk screen. If I do values, you're not going to see it. Actually, names is probably the better place to put generic text. So T names, I mean, you could add, you can add text layers if you want so that you have your uh, generic labeling on its own layer. You just need to remember to output that when you publish your board. Uh, but anyway, draw text, and we're just going to say uh, TTL laser driver let's make that big size five yeah now we're talking bigger yeah bigger oh i can't i could i could punch in a number to do that but we'll just do this because it'll be sloppy and ridiculous looking all right there we go 2D and 3D PCB documents are out of sync. Oh my God. So we'll save that. Fine, just call it PCB. As long as it stays in that folder. Um, and then I can go over to the 3D PCB. And as long as I update it, which, why doesn't it automatically update? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. All right, so there's our TTL laser driver. See what I'm talking about with these freaking parts? This is driving me nuts. I tried to correct this. This is why I need to find a better JST connector. This is unacceptable. I am, I am triggered beyond belief right now. Whatever they did to this part, I've tried to correct it a thousand times and it won't correct. We could try though. We could try now. Yeah, this is, this is unacceptable. This is just completely unacceptable. You can see here, oh, I put it in backwards. All right, I'll have to flip that over. Yeah, this is what happens when you use generic parts. And you see how it's putting little pieces of, uh, little pieces of uh, circuit board out, little pieces of copper outside of the actual line of everything. So those are the things that I need to correct in order to make this uh, viable. Um, yes, it needs to be rotated 180 degrees. Good eye, good eye. It's very, very observant. Um, yeah, grab it. Doot, doot. There we go. 
Unfortunately, it still doesn't let me put it up near the, the edge. So what I could do is, in, in correcting this, uh, in correcting the JST XH series connector, I could also get a proper barrel plug. I guess we got to do it. We got to we got to get into the nitty gritty on this thing, um, just because my parts library sucks. So let's uh, let's see what we could do about that. So what I'll do is let's go to um, oh where do we start with this? We start with the schematic because we need to place the parts that we want to use. Now correcting this plug, I have been through the ringer with, and I'm not going to try to do that again. So what I want to do is actually go to DigiKey's website to start off. So let's start off, and I've, because I've done this recently, I, hopefully I can remember all the steps. So we'll start off with DigiKey, and we're gonna look for a JST-XH. I happen to know the series, so JST-XH. And we're looking in, in stock, CAD model, I want a photo. Number of positions, one, three, and seven. Oh, come on. Well, maybe it's the XR series. Maybe I got the wrong series. Uh, JST connector. I think maybe it's from Amazon is where I got it. And I need to figure out what those, what that generic series is, right? Um, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. JSTXH. Ah, okay. And DigiKey doesn't stock them or something? Hey, is that where I got Perceivia from? Huh. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know I actually purchased this. <laughs> so it is JSTXH. I don't know why DigiKey wouldn't have a 3D model of a two pin one. That seems a little weird. Let's just uh, let's get rid of some of our other things on this. So uh, if I'm looking at, I'm just going to start over. DigiKey, and I do JST XH. So rectangular heading headers, uh, male pins. And then I've got two positions on it. Wow, there's so little. And then I want a CAD model. Four actually remaining. All right, if I can get a CAD model, then I'll, I'll be all right with these. These are a little bit, I mean, the generic, like a generic block model would probably be better. I, I wonder if these will have the JST text on the front. The sacred Jedi texts. Um, yeah, B2B XHAM LF, two and a half millimeter, 17 cents each. Series is XH, JST Sales of America. Let's just click on it and give me the 3D model by Ultra Librarian, huh? They're going to want to log in. No 3D model. I fucking hate you, Ultra Librarian. <laughs> I really do. Ultra Librarian, why are you like this? All right, so we can't find it on DigiKey. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. What I can do, go back to GrabCAD. GrabCAD, usually people are making making models for these things. It's like a Pinterest move. Yeah. And I'm just going to do JSTXH. And we'll find one that looks moderately detailed enough. And I don't really like that because it's got the little thing in the middle. I feel like I've done this before. Have I done this before? I feel like I've done this before. Is nobody interested in the two pin JSTXH? Did I pass over one? That one's in surface mount. Do, 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 do. This one is as close as we could get, and I probably should do that one. Is the XH specifically, be, does it specifically have, no, it doesn't have that in the middle. No, 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 no. Just JST. Let's just see what we get. Yeah, this is going to have all different sizes. JST makes a lot of smaller connectors, and they're using, like, GPSs and stuff like that. Um, so I think maybe the trouble that I had last time is I had trouble finding a good, a good uh, part. Now, listen, I could just, like, 
click on the links that that chat gives me but like i've literally talked about this at the beginning of the stream i don't want to just get answers from my chat so anyway um the model that I have is good for a JST XH. I would have to get that into the right position, and then I guess I could recolor the, the component parts. It's a fairly common connector, though. Maybe it has a different name, but... Three D Connect Central. I'm not going to trust that. Oh, yeah. Perhaps this is where we get it from. Maybe I, that's why I didn't click on it, because it looked like there were too many things. But that right there, that one right there looks like the right one. Jeez. You got a lot of them. So let's let's get this. Uh, All right, let me move that over there. Uh, okay, so I'm going to download those files. I actually have things for charging batteries that are JST like adapters that look kind of like that. It's like they just put a circuit board down underneath all those all those plugs. Good battery charger will come with that. All right, show in folder. So now I've got a folder with just a butt ton of um, JST connectors on it, right? So what I want is through hole, I believe vertical. I think that's the one that I'm looking at. And then I want two pin. Now, now if I really wanted to be a stickler for this, I could take all of this into the CAD. Oh my God, that would be a nightmare. I could take all of this into the CAD and then I would make um, just a zillion parts out of it. And I would have these folders that would be just a complete nightmare. Um, I probably will take this. Uh, let's see, what do I do with this? Cause I don't have footprints. These don't have footprints. I'd have to come up with the footprint for that. Um, and then I'll have to come up with the actual connector itself. And I've done this with some other parts that are in fact JSTs, but they're right angles. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. So let's just start off. No, no, no. Let's just start off uh, getting into the library manager. So oh, look, I'm placing a part. Ha ha, see me, I'm placing a part. Uh, but instead in my Connector specific connectors. See, B two B X X H A is the one that's bad. Uh, let's go to the open open the library manager. I'm going to start a brand new part. It's a brand new part, right? Because if I do this from a generic part form, then I'll have all the layers and stuff that I need, and I can I can reference off of that. So, we're making a new part. Oh, got to wait for this thing to catch up. Close that. Um, totally new part. New device name. JST, XH. Uh, what, is, what do they call it? They don't have, they don't have, like, so JST, XH, uh, two pin. Hmm. They would dash. Oh yeah, you can't do lowercase. All right, whatever. So that's the device name. So that's what's gonna that's what's gonna hold all of the information. Basically, it's like a it's like a storage area. Um, oh god, there's like no here. The inspector's open. That's why. So all right, this is where all the stuff goes. This is what would display all the stuff. I don't I don't know what you want from me. All right, all right. So anyway, um, I need a new symbol for this thing. It's the symbol is going to be super simple. It's just a two pin plug. I could, I could reference something else. I could actually enter a symbol name of something else and link it to this, but I'll just start a new one. So we'll just do JST XH two P or something like that. So now I'm in a drawing form and I can, I can draw the actual device symbol. Now it, it is a little easier if you actually start from a part that Maybe, maybe we should do that. Yeah, instead of actually starting like a completely brand new thing, I'm not going to do that. I'll get rid of this. 
and I'm actually going to make a new library IO part. So I think doing like, um, it would be, where would that be? Under library IO, and I think I make a new, I mean, if I do the 3D one, it's going to try to make me do it with AutoCAD. And then I can go up here and I can click on, that's the PC package maker. Where is the actual website? There's a way, there's a way to get into it that I forget. So I'm just going to try to, just going to try to suss this out here and, and figure it out. Because it's, it's uh, getting into the managed libraries and then... Uh, yeah. Updates to your library available. Would you like to merge 14 to your local copy? Uh, sure, why not? That's going to change a bunch of stuff. All right. Um, so, yeah, what I'm trying to do is, is remember how to uh, get to library.io, the website, so that I can create the full suite of stuff. Oh, and then I get an error report. That's nice. <laughs> well, we're going to have to... Well, we'll start from square one on this then. I warned you guys about this, that it, uh, this part of the program is not really good at what it does. Your report has been received and is being analyzed for a resolution. I literally just clicked on something and it crashed. Okay. All right. Can I start fusion up again? Cause it seems to be stuck at 57%. I'm happy that you're analyzing nothing. There you go. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, back to what we were doing. Start fusion up again. <laughs> we're going to have to get a 2-pin JST connector in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get to the 3D part generation thing, and I'm going to put down a pin header. And when I put down the pin header, that's going to have 0.1-inch spacing on it already, and it'll have the appropriate pin sizes and all that stuff. Oh God, we got to do this. Got to open up all the recovery files, huh? Oh, is it still working? I got to open everything up and hope it doesn't crash again. <laughs> I thought I opened that already. All right, there we go. Now, for some reason, it thinks that all of my views have to be the expanded views again. All right, are we back? Untitled, we don't need. We were in the library manager. Get rid of all the inspectors and stuff. Actually, wait, we need this for the... Oh, no, it came up. Oh, my God, what is it doing right now? <laughs> what is it doing? Okay, there. That in there. That's our actual PCB that we're working on. I don't really need it open right now. I'm just going to leave the window open because that's how the that's how it works. We're just looking at that. Get rid of these things. I think I looked at everything. I think we're I think we're set until I need to save stuff. All right. Library manager I don't think it's automate, manage. Manage has all the library IO push and pulls, but how do I get it to open up this thing and create a new library IO package? I think maybe what I need to do is start a device, save it, and then I think I right click. No, hold on. It's, it's weird, the interface is just weird. Yeah, see, create new 3D model, attach copy of existing, delete. Did they remove the references to library IO in an update? It might have done. They might have done that. Cause like there was a there was like a uh, create part in library IO that I I think I'm missing now. They want me to use this to create the package. I mean I can do that, but I was just hoping to hoping hoping to open it up in the online editor because it's better. Let me just check. 
I'm just gonna Google it. Not about doing that. So what were we looking at? Uh, Fusion 360. Oops. Fusion 360, uh, create part in library. Blah, 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 blah. Learn to make library parts. It's not that hard. <laughs> uh huh, uh huh. Wonder what that's like. Yeah, I need to, I need to see like the basics because I'm not sure where library IO it's like. This will probably have me auto logged in. No, unless I think I need to click through fusion in order to get it to log me in properly. But I'm sure I'm sure if I look JST XH. Nope. <laughs> you got this one. That's perfect. But yeah, I, I don't understand where the links went. If I'm forgetting to click something is probably mostly what's happening here. So I need to I need to remember how to how to get to the proper things so that I can use their online tool. I could just use their generic like their in in CAD one as well. It's basically the same thing. So if I do that, I go to the package creator and I look for what I'm trying to put down here. So I'm trying to put down just basically like a two pin header, which would probably be that two row header. Yeah, that's this thing up here. So two pin header, this guy right here, and then I'm going to do number of rows one, number of columns two. Origin pin one, pin numbering, fine. Uh, it doesn't matter. There's only two pins. Pad shape, we're gonna stick with a round pad. 2.54, it's all the same dimensions, yeah. Uh, I think it might have slightly larger pins. No, it, it is actually just a regular old pin header. They're probably a little shorter, but that doesn't matter because we're replacing the 3D model with the thing that we need. Okay. So we'll leave all that other stuff fine, uh, and then just add that to the thing. Oh my dear God. What is this abomination? Ugh. Some of the numbers weren't exactly correct. <laughs> but that's okay, because we're replacing this. So let's close the package editor. Let's hit finish on this weird thing. Oh my God, what is that number? Uh... Why is it going into that folder? What in the hell? It's like, I, I don't even have that. Uh, maybe maybe I didn't open the folder structure in the thing. So yeah, uh, maybe we should put it in generic parts. No, that's in the RC car folder. We are in burn the subs 2.5. And I am adding it in the laser driver PCB. Now this, this might have all kinds of garbage in it when I'm done. I've just got to kind of manage this so that it doesn't get all out of, out of place. Yeah, it's like super thick. What's up with that? Why is my moderator being fucking toxic? All right, um, we'll just call this JST uh, XH, even though it's really not. So JST XH, and that's already got a footprint on it and everything. Where are you taking me? Oh, we're back to where we started in the schematic. Uh, hello, hello. There should absolutely be a lot of stuff in here. Oh, this is the library manager. Right, right, right. I know what I'm doing. Okay, so um, let's take a look at that. Oh my god, where did it go? So we're looking at the different packages right now, and down here, there's going to be JSTXH, or, or whatever we called it, right? What is this one? What the hell? No, just I just wanted to see what it was. <laughs> PTH is a different s series, so that's not going to be the right thing. Uh, so what did I call it? Called it single row two pin header mail. Yeah, this is this is the one. So this is the abomination that we created earlier. Now we've got all the AutoCAD tools, so we can actually take the model and we can delete it. 
Wait. Sketches? Alright, alright. Where is the footprint? That's what I'm wondering. That's not necessary. Yeah, silk screen. Okay, cool. So what we can do is we can just get rid of the model. And now we have our the location of the, the, the part in the end, right? This is the way that I've had to do it. I don't I don't know. It's just what it is. So let's go to uh burn the subs two and a half. Laser driver PCB. And then I now I have all of this stuff here. And I can upload into this folder. It doesn't need to be in this folder, but I can just do it. JSC XH from, from GrabCAD. Click upload. We gotta actually wait for this thing to upload. I don't know what it is about Fusion. They I think they hobble. I think they, they really severely limit the amount of uploading that you're capable of doing. So we gotta wait a minute for this thing to go in. And I think that I think it's like when you transfer your Xbox Live account, they, they intentionally slow it down so they can sell thumb drives. That's what this feels like. I feel like they intentionally hobble the upload speed of AutoCAD so that, um, I don't know, so you don't use external stuff. Okay, this is where I frenetically click in and out of the folder until it actually uploads this. Please, please, please. <laughs> they don't give you any information and the thing is 522 kilobytes. I don't know what is going on right now. Complete. Oh, look who decided to finally complete that. All that 522k going into going into the server over there at AutoCAD HQ. Let's take a look at this model quick and see if we need to do anything to it. I mean, I'm okay with the color of the plastic. I think I'm going to make the pins gold just cuz I can. They look they look kind of black and white right now, even though they probably are gray on the real thing. The ones that I have, yeah, they're gray. It's gray and white, so I guess that is that is an appropriate look. Although these aren't as shiny as they could be. Uh, let's make them shiny. They might as well, right? So my favorite menu, the appearance menu, and then I'm going to go to metal. And let's do nickel. Let's do nickel plated, just to be fancy. We'll do polished nickel. No, they're not gold in real life. If I can't do it, I won't lie. Brillin Shuker. Brillin Shuker, 25 months. Thank you so much. I can't lie. I can't lie. I would be living my life as a lie if I made these pins anything but nickel. They look nickel plated, so I will do them like that. Some of the kits do actually have gold gold pins, but we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do a direct representation of what's there. Polished nickel. So I don't want to do this to the bodies and components because that'll make the whole thing look nickel plated. It certainly is not. So I got to make sure to click this a couple times so it knows what's happening. Go to the faces, grab that, and just apply it to everything. Now it doesn't look like much now, but when I actually start tilting and rotating it around, this will actually represent a little bit more of what's going on visually. It'll, it'll pick up uh, reflections and stuff like that. I just appreciate it for the accuracy. Brillin Shuker, your name is actually going to go on a database and not one of those evil databases. It'll go on a database on my computer that will represent the people who have been burnt up onto the board. What's going to happen is I'm going to take that list of people who've subbed in between boards, shuffle it, and then make that the initial batch of names. So you have a chance of being the first person ever to go up on the board. We'll see who it is. There's no mad dash. There's no matter dash. There's no mad dash to be the first person up on the board. And then there's a list of subs and gift subs that I need to put up on the board as the initial batch. So we'll probably have a couple streams of me just burning stuff, <laughs> which is fine. It's a good christening of the board. I'll be happy to. It's always nice when we get a chance to like celebrate a project actually being done around here. Because typically the way it works is I'll struggle to, to do a project and then I'll finish it and then you'll never see it again. It just goes away. I don't like that. Wish I had more of an opportunity to uh, to sort of relish in the accomplishments around here. I work hard on these freaking things. I don't know if you guys know how hard I work on stuff. Um, 
<laughs> and to have it just like project done next is kind of it gets kind of annoying <laughs> all right look at that look at that's it. gorgeous it's gorgeous i don't know if i want to re texture the actual plug itself there's a lot of there's a lot of triangles in that if i wanted to retexture the plug itself i should have done the whole body at once i'm willing to leave it a little bit gray because i think that is visually it's a little better and i think it matches the plastic a little bit so i'm not going to go through that whole process again no no i will not okay uh done with that done with that save that click OK, close that file. Because what we're going to do now is where I have the footprint for the part, I'm going to pull the part in. This is the only way that I know how to do this, by the way. So the JSTXH that we're editing right now, the one with the really thick, the really thick bedonk, we're going to replace it with this thing. And since our holes are 2.54 apart, we can just drag this thing up on top of what was already there. Um, I will then later edit the silk screen so that everything works out. So what I can do is let's just take this out of the way. Yeah, let's let's close that. Take that out of the way. I need to find what I'm going to use in order to place this thing on the centers of this of these dots basically, right? So, let's try this. So click okay on that. And then I want yeah, the silk screen is still visible. So if I basically move use either the arrange or the move tool I think I only have do I have a range I don't have the arrange tool that's interesting move components this one uh, and then we'll do point to point choose the center of that pad and move that to the center of that circle in the sketch all right then I need to somehow move this down. And I guess it could stick up a little bit from the PCB, but I, I want to get it kind of close. 2.5, 2.7? I don't know if that's making contact. No, not yet. It might be 3. It might be minus 3. Seems to me like it is minus three, although we are sticking through the board just a little bit. It's hard to tell. So we'll do minus 2.95. That still, that's still seems to be sticking through. It's hard, it's actually very hard to tell. Oh no, that's actually above by just a little bit. I'm going to leave it at 2.95. It'll be a little janky for now, but I think that'll be okay. So click OK on that, and now we have our new part in there. It's a JSTXT or whatever. Um, and then I guess I can go into the silkscreen sketch. No, I can't. It's locked. Yeah, I'd have to go into the silkscreen editor and change the outer dimensions of this. And so I can use the 3D model to actually figure out where all that stuff is and correct my name and my value stuff. So let's save that. The descriptions and stuff are all messed up too, just because of what I created. Um, but yeah, done with that. Let's edit the silk screen. Uh, where are we? We're all the way back here. Oh my God, everything's in here at once. Devices. JST, XH, two pin, open that up. Of course it opens it up in the weirdest way possible. Oh, there's actually nothing associated with it. That's right. Uh, this is not the one that I just made. Where's the one that I just made? <laughs> Wait a minute. Where did it go? I think that was just the package in there. So if I go to the JSTXH2 pin and I do new uh, local package, it should be in here somewhere. This is what I'm talking about with this interface being like completely garbage. Yeah, there we go. Look at this. Single row, two pin header, male, straight, 2.54, cold pitch, blah, blah, blah. Like all this information is wrong. All right, whatever. Okay. So there's, there's those two. I need to make a symbol for it, and I haven't finished making the symbol yet. I think we've, we've, we crashed in the middle of that. 
Um, but I can make the symbol, and then I'll have all the pads associated with it and everything. And if I, I, I need to edit the footprint, we'll need to go into the footprint category and actually edit that so that the outline is in the right place and the name and the value has, you know, is in the right spots for that stuff. Um, this is the part that I, I didn't want to show you guys today because I don't, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this. It's just the only way that I'm able to get a good JST plug into this thing. Into these kids. Uh, so anyway, anyway. I mean, I can just do a new... Uh, a new footprint. And then I don't remember what I exactly want to do with this. I know that I can create two pins like that. Pin one, pin two. And then I'll just draw a box around it. Hit escape on that. I want to move these to just be like here and here. And then I will place, oh yeah, here, we'll do a box. Just do like this. That's not what I wanted at all. Uh, <laughs> draw a rectangle, but it's a filled in rectangle. That's not what I need. Info, guide, patch top, V score, nets, buses. See, here's the thing is like, I don't know much about the layers for this. I don't know where the outline of the symbol should be. I was hoping that I could just like assign a generic symbol to it. So that I could get, that I could get like, uh, I don't know, I don't think it's guide. What is that layer? I guess I could open up a different symbol and like, see what it has. Okay, so it is on the symbols layer. I really just friggin' just take that and control C. <laughs> the copy and paste method on uh, Eagle used to be a lot more complicated than that. Do, do, do. I'm just stealing it from other stuff. The easiest way to do it. Make it, like, vaguely look like a connector. I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be a cursed part until I can come in and actually, like, edit it properly. But for now, that'll do. So save that. Good? We're good? Are we good? Devices. JSTXH. Open that up again. And now I can actually add a symbol to it. Uh, how do I add the symbol? <laughs> I thought this is where I did it, but apparently I can't figure out how. Symbols. Did it like create a new one and now, uh, it doesn't want to be associated with this device? Is that what's going on? Or is there a button down here that I need? Local package, add from web. Oh, add, that's where I do it. Add from web takes you to library IO. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I wanted to add it from library.io. This is where, this is where you do it. You add package from web and then create new, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about with the fucking like process of the design of these things is like, this is a mess. This is a complete mess. <laughs> and I gotta wallow around it and I hate having streams where I have to do this I hate streams where I have to do this cause uh this is not fun <laughs> now does it want me to just draw the symbol in this cause I've already got it I already drew it I drew it it's in the symbols but I don't know how to add the symbol to this thing cause there isn't like a I can't right click on it. It's like create new symbol, but then how do you? Mm. Yeah, see, that's got the symbol just sitting in it. Under the gear symbol, where are you looking? Is 
Gear symbol. This thing? It's a label. This would be... Oh, okay, yeah. I think this is the button that I was looking for. <laughs> this this button that's not pulling up uh, any any text over it. It's not... There's no... Hello? Hello? Oh, you're thinking over here? That's just a filter. But what is that column? Oh, it's the same thing as right-clicking. Okay, so I think this is the button that I want, but there's no there's no indicator at all of what this button is or does. But it pulls up all of the different symbols. <laughs> why why is it up? Well, okay, so the footprint and the three dimensional package button is down there. To add the symbol to it, it's on the top bar. I don't know, man. I didn't exactly invent this program, but you know, you'd think. There it is. See, now I get to put it somewhere. Let's just do that. Amazing. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So now I've got the full part. <sighs> so let's, um, let's edit the... Um... Why is this still open? <sighs> we need to edit the footprint. It's just so I can place things in the right spot, right? Yeah, it's absolutely the weirdest. Like, once you learn all those steps, you forget what the other steps are. <laughs> I don't remember what I did, and I'll have to do this again. I'll have to do it again in order to get this thing in here properly. So yeah, name, value. Wow, amazing, amazing, amazing. So let's take this from, I guess, pin one is going to be our center point. And so I just need the lines to represent this connector. See, now I have multiple files that have all this information in it. It's a, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. So anyway, this is the original file uh, that we recolored, and I need to figure out where this stuff is. So I need to get dimensions from the center of this post to the edge so that I you know, I have an idea of what the size of the thing is. Um, from the center of that post to this edge, all those fun, fun measurements. So here to here, that's gonna give me a measurement that I don't need all right, how do I get AutoCAD to tell me the answers to these things properly? <laughs> I need answers. I need answers so that I can put silk screens down. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't let me do the center of that. And I could probably put, I could place an axis through the middle of that if I wanted to, or I could just calculate it. So the size of the pins are 0.64. That's a nice easy number to figure out what half of that is, right? Uh, so the distance from, let's see, it'd be from here to here, 3.033 minus 0.64. Ay, ay, ay. And we'll get it close to that. It doesn't need to be exactly, but it, it should be, it should be kind of neat, like near that number. Just so that we have an idea of where the stuff is. I can't find the, can't find the tab. There it is. Because, yeah, you can see the center point is right here in the middle of pin one. So now we need to figure out where the, the rest of the connector falls. And I could, I could default to the data sheet for that, too. Maybe the data sheet puts that in better terms for us. So maybe, maybe we can, instead of measuring the 3D model, we can go to a JST XH data sheet. The problem is with a generic connector like this, like a fairly common connector, what we're going to end up with is a data sheet that has... 7,000 different products on it and we won't be able to see exactly what we're uh, what we're looking for here we won't get quite the the layout that we want this is surface mount that's not what I'm looking for there there's the cutout and the drill uh oh oh yeah I can't zoom in on it like a PDF that's great thank you digikey thank you for removing this from the digikey uh, or sorry removing this from the common PDF form where I could zoom in and, and run around <laughs> it's too bad you aren't recording this on some kind of web-based video or something so you can look back at what you did. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is, I don't have it, like, if I really wanted to, I'd have to put this down to, like, a procedure. 
and then I could then I could revise the procedure as as accordingly and minimize it into a into a number of steps. Look at how slow everything is. This computer is like hates me now. Uh, <laughs> JSTXH specification. You are not helping me. Handling manual. Oh look, there's a 3D model. <laughs> Sons of bitches. Come on, man. I just want I just want a simple data sheet. I just need to see what the dimensions are to the edges, and I guess I could get that with the uh, Alright, back to the 3D model. Let's just go back to the 3D model. I just need to figure out what size box I'm putting around this thing and where those lines are gonna end up uh in relation to where the pins are without moving the pins, because those those holes are are the important part. So from the center of that pin, I need to figure out where the edges are, huh? I didn't name any of this stuff. All right. So which one are we taking as pin one? We'll just make it so that like, uh, well actually they're, I think they, they have an, do these have an arrow label designation on them? I mean, they've got the, the keyway on them, so they will only plug in a certain way. It would probably it would probably be smart for me to figure that out, huh? God damn it. <laughs> I gotta go back into reference material. Back into reference material. We gotta figure out which one of these is pin one so that we can design accordingly. And I might have to rearrange the 3D model on, on top of the pins. So uh did I close like a quarter of a million? No. No no no. Here we go. JST XH. Uh, let's go back to DigiKey for this. Uh, oh, wait, wait a minute. I've already got the window open. Yeah. That's right. You little bastard. Let's take a look at your data sheet. See what you got to say. Uh, series XH, blah, 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 blah. Product number, XH series data sheet. All right. There we go. Actually in PDF. So much easier. All right. Which one is pin one? The one that is the... Pin that's designated one. Which which one was pin one? One circuit, right there, right? Does that mean this is pin one, or does it mean the other side is pin one? Hey, how about you tell me which one is pin one, you you big jerk? Ah, there's a notch in the side of the thing for circuit number one. Ah, and there's the notch. Okay. Hey, you learn something new every day. There's a little notch in the uh, in the top rim on this side of it. At least we know which one, pin one is, okay. If we're looking at the shorter part, it's on the right. All right, so now I know which one is pin one, and we've got a ton of other helpful dimensions in here, hopefully. Hopefully these are helpful dimensions. Because I need to know what the width of the socket is around things. So 5.75. But this is offset, so that's 2.35. So it'd be positive 2.35 to get to here. <laughs> then I got to do 5.75 minus 2.35 in order to find out the other dimension. I hate mechanical drawings, you know. <laughs> I know they can't. I know they can't bring out every single dimension in a mechanical drawing. But man, having to do this weird ass math is just really annoying. Okay, so let's uh let's do this weird ass math. Eh, ass math. Um. That's not the right, that's not the right one. Neither is that. Where is my... That's not it either. That's definitely not it. I keep clicking on the wrong stuff. This one. Okay. And so we are going negative. This is why you need to have as many monitors as possible. Sorry. I'm sorry if I king shamed about your ass math. He's handled one of my ass pennies. Uh, 2.35 uh, below if pin 1 is on the right. So if pin 1 is on the left... Uh, oh, my brain. My brain is hurting. This hurt my brain. This hurts you, Captain Shepard. Um, 2.35 forward puts pin 1 on our left. So we go 2.35 forward. So this one... Oh, I'm sure that's a legitimate phone call. Hold on. Hello. Service department. We are calling about your vehicle's manufacturer's warranty. We sent you several notices. I have a 1999 BMW. 
It's really under warranty? This is the happiest day of my life. All right. Um, 2.5... Wait a minute. It's already 2.54... 2.35 it needs to be. From negative 3.81 to positive 6.35. So that's definitely that axis. We need it to go upwards. And that needs to be 2.35, not 5.4. Yeah, I never know whether or not it's a doctor's office calling. That's the problem. Oh no, it's not a meme. It's not a meme, Leb. Um, Americans get these like daily. I get two a day. Two calls a day about this this crap. And you know, they could they could tell the phone companies to freaking stop. Make it stop phone companies, and they would, but that's how it is. Alright, we moved a different line, so I need to move this one too. That's always fun. 2.35. All right, that's the front edge. The back edge is 575 minus 235. I don't know what that math. 575 minus 235, calculator. Five. This, is, this stuff sucks. This is why I wanted to do it on my own. 3.4. So we're going to negative 3.4. Negative 2.54 becomes negative 3.4. Finding the width is going to be harder to do. Negative 2.54, negative 3.4. And then this one, 3.4, done. Okay, so there's, there are the, there's the front and the back dimension. I can actually move the name around if I want to and the value in order to get those placed properly. Probably should be somewhere around here. The width is gonna change now. And then this dot, I really don't need. I, I, don't, I don't like that. All right. Name and value. Okay, so now we need to find out the width. Back to the mechanical drawing. Uh, the thing is, our width is in reference to pin one, which, oh, look at that. 2.54, position of pin one. So, Whatever this is gonna so that that means that this line right here is gonna sit at negative 2.54. Isn't that convenient? 3.81 to 3.81. That'll be negative 2.54. Unfortunately, I have to do that twice. Negative 2.54. Negative 2.54. All right, that's one side. Now for the difficult one. Well, if that's 2.54 and this is 2. Point, shit, what is 0.1 inch? It's 2.54, is it? Wait, 2.45. Dun dun dun. I made a mistake. Oh my god. Dear god. I've ruined it all. Everything is ruined because he couldn't get that number right. Oh, no. I didn't correct him. I didn't correct him. Why didn't I correct him? So it's 2.45 plus 2.54 plus 2.45. <laughs> no, that isn't... No, I'm talking about this dimension. See, 2.54 versus 2.45. They made it nice and, con nice and confusing. Oh, well, they say two and a half between pins. So. Yeah, they're saying two and a half between pins, which would kind of mess us up a little bit. I haven't measured it yet. Uh, let's see what the 3D model says. Bump, 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 bump. So if I inspect this versus this, is it going to give me a center to center? It, it gives me the most cursed measurement that I possibly could get. 2.118. Uh, what? <laughs> what? Wait, 2.118. Uh, let me do, let me do, here's, here's how you do it. Um, inspect, and then we go this line to this line. 2.54. Somebody's lying. Who's lying? Are you lying to me? Look at this. 
Somebody's lying. So we'll take 2.54. 2.45. Oh, wait, we don't need that first 2.45. So it's going to be 2.54 plus 2.45. Oh my God. Talk about curses. That's like a dyslexia test. 2.54 plus 2.45. It's like the beginning of a riddle. 4.9. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. The 0 0.01 millimeter. Do I dare have my silk screen stick out by 0 0.01 millimeter? Jeez. 4.99 ass, motherfucker. This sucks. All right, 4.99. <laughs> God damn it. All right, 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 all right. What's, where the hell, where the hell was I? You are going to be at about five. I'm just going to make it five. And if you're able to tell that 0 0.01 millimeter difference, then fine. You just have to live with that. You just have to live with the world you created. All right, there. We finally got the dimensions in. Wasn't that easy? See, the problem, the, the problem is that I should be doing this on my own. I should go through all this effort and trouble in order to make my own library that has the generic parts that I have and I use constantly. And that way I could have just thrown... I could have just thrown all this stuff down and, and had it functional that way. What are, you, what are you beeping? What's long beep? 24 hours remaining in your CGM session. Tomorrow's Friday, so I'll probably replace this tonight. The constant glucose monitor. Hey, thanks for the follow, by the way. Guys who are following. Um, people who are following. So anyway, this is our generic part, and now we've got like an outline around it, and so I know where my JST connector what space my JST connector occupies. I'm going to save this. User saved. It's fine. I want to get out of the library manager. I'm so sick of the library manager. We've still got recovery files open because the, the program decided to take a poop while we were working with it. Now, we don't need the 3D model open anymore. I don't like that I put the giant Creative Commons on there. But anyway, um, anyway... Now that we have a part that we created from nothing, I can now go back into the schematic and replace those parts. So now I just go in and I go to a little trash can and I trash it. Goodbye forever. 3 amp, 250 volt. Who made that part? That's a terrible part. Uh, okay, so place a component or the, the, the whatever... Go to my managed library that I specifically put it into. Wait a minute. I put it into connector. And now I've got JST XH 2 pin. Boom. It's got this beautiful looking little 3D symbol. Oh wait, you know what I didn't do? Hold on. I didn't do something. Emergency, emergency, emergency. Everything's gonna everything's gonna go crap. Nothing will work. Uh, I need to actually go back into the parts in the library manager. I need to go back into the library manager because I need to associate the pins of the device properly. <laughs> I'm going to cough. Hold on. I need to associate the pins of the device. I forgot to do that. I didn't do it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. If only somebody was there looking over my shoulder to tell me exactly what I should be doing right before I do it. Um, so yeah, uh, where are we going? We're going to open up... We're going to edit. Why Why are none of my libraries in there? Okay, okay. I don't know what's going on with that. I should be I should be editing this one specifically, but it's because that's the one I was clicked on. So let me go to my library. E, F, G, H, I, J. Where is that? God damn it. Oh my god. Wait, is this specific components? What's going on here? Hold on. No, no, no. I, I wasn't... Yeah, I was clicked on the specific thing. I want to go into connector specific, the top one. Open in library manager. No, it's the same deal. Uh, it's probably not in use, is it? Oh, yeah, it is. See, I don't know which one. Version 45 or version 26. <laughs> All right, we'll edit this one. All right, it really needs a better interface for editing these things. See, and then it opens this up. It's like, what am I doing with that? 
All right, uh, so JSTXH two pin, I open it up in the big manager. It's so it's so confusing. There's so much like that just needs revision on this. Okay, so here's the thing. I have two pins that I put down here on the symbol. I have two pads that are put down here on the uh, the PCB layout. And then the 3D model is the 3D model. That'll just manage itself. So what I need to do is I need to go to connect. And now I'm going to associate the pins on the drawing with the pins on the actual uh, board layout thing. And pin one is pin one, pin two is pin two. Boop, boop, done. Now, the, the only thing that I think could possibly be wrong is if I need to turn this 180 degrees and make the one pin, uh, you know, the two pins line up properly. And if I have to do that, that's going to be annoying to do. But uh, I think I need to... I, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do that. If I open it up in something that's not the library manager... Because I'm not going to... I, I changed the symbol, but I don't know if the symbol is going to update to the 3D model. Why did the symbol blank out over here? What's going on? Oh, it came back. Let's just see. Let's see what... Um, there's a 50-50 chance that I got it right, and I probably got it wrong. Looking at the way that this is oriented, I think what I did was... Yeah, it's going to be... So if I put this into the drawing right now... So I go to the components... And I choose from my specific manage connectors. I really need to clean up the fact that I have two libraries called the same exact thing. And I go down to the part that we just made. We can still see that the silk screen on the 3D part is, is not the right one. But I click OK. And then I put down a bunch of these. I'll just put down one for now. Put down one and I go to the manager. The, the, the layout thingy. Oh my god, where did it go? It's all the way over here. Take this little guy, put that right here. Now my center has changed too. I don't know how to make it. Uh, why is it U dollar sign one in in the CAD program? I hate it when it does that. It'll it'll like add a dollar sign for you. It's like I didn't ask you to do that. All right, anyway, boop. Now instead of that cursed part, we have this, but it's off. Dun dun dun. Wait. Oh yeah, those are in the right spot, but I need to flip the part 180 degrees. I need to flip either the 3D model or the silk screen, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the 3D model. So let's see if I can, let's see if I can, uh, yeah. The dollar sign symbolizes all of the, all the cash money. Yeah, right, okay. I wish, man. I wish. People who get to do this kind of stuff for a living, they're lucky. Um, <laughs> let me flip this part. It still looks black and white, doesn't it? I'm going to flip this part around, though. How do I did that? I think if I open up this... I, it would be nice if the, um, the symbol, the reference to the symbol updated with it. But it doesn't. It just locks the silk screen in for all of eternity. And that has nothing to do with the rest of the part. Except for the fact that that determined where the footprints were. So what I need to do is I need to rotate this part around its center. It's, it's weird, the, the referential stuff that happens within AutoCAD, and I wish we had more control over it. You know, I wish the parts manager had that reference kind of stuff going on, like, oh, this is the silkscreen part in this, and, you know, oh, I redrew this, so why doesn't it... It's, it's so annoying, because, like, yeah, I, starting with the generic part, I was able to place this thing properly, and that was a nice, smooth way to get me from piece to piece to piece and associate an external three-dimensional model with the silkscreen layout of an existing part that I created in the parts maker. But now that reference is forever tainted. <laughs> I would have to find something that's a little closer to that connector in order to manipulate it properly. Anyway, let's rotate this part. You can rotate a horse in your head for free. And the cops can't even, they can't even do anything about it. Um, okay, so let's see. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I want to take that and I'm move it. Move component. I want to rotate it. Where's my axis? I don't have an axis. This is a better way to do it. Uh, where can I select the center of this face? I'm going to select out here. Oh, selection. That's what I want. So components, 
And then for selection, I really, I really want the center of this face. Oh, wait, no, that's not going to do it, is it? That's not going to... God damn it. Okay, how do I get the center of these two things to rotate properly? Huh. Yeah, you can do it. It's free. It's just, it's free. Nobody can say anything about it. I need to rotate it around the center point between these two pylons. I don't think this face is going to have a center. Let's try it. Where's my move command? What happened? I want this. <laughs> I want this point right here, but it's not a selectable, it's not a selectable thing. I've got the center of that whole thing. I can flip it around and then I can move it by the offset. I need the center of this pin and this pin. That's wild. What if I do this and I hold down Alt? No. Do this, hold down Control? No. This and shift. What if I hit shift and I do this and this? It absolutely does not accept that. <laughs> Set pivot. Nah, that doesn't know where I'm selecting. Wow, that's wild. All right. Um, let us do a construct then. So, well, or I can just add, I can just add a, uh, a sketch line. I don't have I don't have an extra sketch though. Hmm. I can add an extra sketch and then I'll have that point in the middle there. I'm just looking to see if there's anything else that represents that area that's like right in between these two pylons. Or I can rotate it around the center and then I can uh, do the offset. So what would the offset be according to the data sheet? Well, the data sheet lied to us. The data sheet lied to us. But it does say 2.35 and 5.75. What is the center of 5.75? God damn it. Two point eight seven five minus two point three five point five two five. God, this sucks. All right, point five two five. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rotate it around the center and then move it point five two five so it lines up with the holes again. Yikes. It's so easy. Three-dimensional design is so easy. It's bother. Why don't you just design a circuit board? It's so simple. Okay. Uh, bah, 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 modify. No, no, modify. Uh, move copy. I'm sure there's some other like align tool that I could probably use in order to help with that. But yeah, having the unreliable data sheet is so weird. 180 degrees. And then we are moving in this direction, 0 0.525. That does not look right. <laughs> that does not look right. Is it? Hold on. Did I calculate it wrong? Probably. So if I rotate that 180 degrees, I need to figure out how to get it back to where it was. <clears throat> and so what I was figuring is half of 5.75 is the center. And then you would take the difference of those two, and that would be the amount that you move it over. What's the break in my logic there? Where did I get that wrong? Where did I get that wrong? Oh, no, that's the same dimension. 2.35575 I was going to try doubling it. Why does it why does the offset need to be twice as big? Cuz I'm taking it from the original position. Oh, the difference is between the original position and center. I need to take it to center and then I need to take it away from center. Okay, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Um so yeah, move again. Move copy. Use this guy. Select the the component. This thing. Reselect my object as the center. Go 180 degrees, and then move it in. And I can cheat. 
Yep, move it in this direction. And then that would be 0 0.525 times 2. Why does it not like that? Now, theoretically, that lands us right back in the... It's not back in the middle of the holes. What, did I get the number wrong? No, 0 0.525 times 2, and it's not quite... What I'm looking at here are these, these, uh, these sketch holes. It's not quite right. I don't know why. Maybe it has to do with the, um, has to do with the dimensions that the 3D model is versus the dimensions that the data sheet tells us. That might be the case. It might just be, I might just need to move it one. That, okay, that's back to where it was. So, move. Components. I don't know why it has such a fetish for moving components or for moving bodies versus components. 180 degrees, move it back like this. What if I just make it like one? I can't see the lines. Uh, I'll click OK and I can control Z it if I need to. Yeah, one's not enough. Okay. Man, this is annoying. Move copy, components, this guy, 180 degrees, then we move it in what direction? We move it this direction, it should be 1.5 about, right, because point no, 0.52, it will be 1.4, 1.5 is approximate, Let's see what that looks like. Can't really see the other symbol. Oh, it's not nearly enough. Or it's too much, too much, too much. So it would be something like, like 0.9. Why is my math weird? Oh no, that moved it too far in the other direction. Where's the symbol? <laughs> this is such a weird way to do it. I'm sorry that it's so weird, chat. I apologize, but actually that looks like it might be dead on. Let's try it and just see. With everything highlighted, it's very difficult to see the outlines. It was 0 0.9. 0 0.9 was the answer. Look at that. Look at that. It was, I mean, 0 0.95 maybe? Ish. Components. This guy. Move him this way. Point, like 0.1 is too much. Because now it's, and I can barely see that outline. Ugh. I wish I could highlight that outline to see it a little better. This is, again, yeah. This is what I mean about these tools being kind of like an afterthought. That's, that's a little better. It's not exactly centered, but at least the holes will end up in the right place, right? And, and also, this can kind of like move around, too. Your pivot point might not be in the center since it was kind of a random face. That's true. I thought, I, I assumed the symmetrical, symmetrical sidewalls, which come to think of it, they, eh, I think they are. I'm not, I'm not going to measure that right now. But anyway, we'll capture the position and we're done with this. Save it. Done. I could have approximately done that and just like drag it into place because that's what I did before. And there's wiggle room in everything. So there's going to be wiggle room in the drawing. All right, so now that that's like that, I can go back actually into the library manager and save the changes and upload them to the cloud. You have to get an account at a library IO and actually like connect them to one another in order to, uh, in order to do this. And I hate that because it's another thing that has all of my stuff. But let's upload to the cloud. A new version of the library will be created. Yeah, version 47. This is what I'm talking about. I need to remove all of the devices from uh, Eagle. Everything. Remove it all. Just take it all out. And then start from nothing. And then from nothing, I can build my, my super duper 3D rendering library. This is like a major... I mean, we... Man, this is, this is a major hurdle whenever we have to do this on stream. That's uploading the library and then downloading it again.
as if I needed it to do that. <laughs> and then, of course, for some reason, and I, I don't know why, this program, there is just like a big hurdle at the end of uploading and downloading that it has to overcome. Are we done? Are you done? Can I, can I return to the way the things were? The world before we before we knew all of this change? Or did you overwrite all of my all of my edits in the little things that I did? Which is also a possibility. I've seen it do that before. Where it just wouldn't update a part. It is so frustrating and clunky. Alright, so let's go back to the schematic. Let's remove the part. Because this this reference is to an old part. So it's going to put that old part down again. So I'm going to remove that and I'm going to place a new part. And now hopefully this JSTXH2 pin, put all the effort into, place it down there, save it. Go over to our two-dimensional schematic or two-dimensional PCB layout rather. Oh my God, it's gone. No, it's over here. Put that up in the corner. Nobody puts JST in the corner. Save it. Now let's go to the 3D PCB and let's see how messed up and, and awful it is. Bonk. If this actually works out, I'll be, I'll be happy, but we're basically looking for a 180 degree turn from this part right here. <laughs> it fucking did nothing. It did nothing. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, this is where things get kind of frustrating. I, I wish somebody from AutoCAD could watch the past 15 minutes of video to, to, to take a look at what we just did. Because I took a part and I flipped it around and then I changed where the 3D model was supposed to be oriented on it. And I hit save. You guys saw me. And I saved it. And I uploaded it to the cloud. And it downloaded it back from the cloud again. And then I went in and I placed it in the file and nothing changed. This is a bit of the frustration that I've been dealing with. Um, it's like the first time you put that part in, that's just it. I don't understand what's up with that. I meticulously saved it too. I'm gonna go back to this. I mean, I don't think there are different versions of this and it's not like I should be re -import Maybe Maybe I need to re-import it into the, into the model which is just obnoxious. Because if I change that file, the associations on that file should be changed, right? But I, maybe it doesn't, it doesn't update it to this part specifically. So if I, if I open the device, and it's perhaps this is still wrong. Yeah, it should be flipped around. So this 3D model, but you can go into edit from here Oh, and it's, it's, now it's got the new package. Wait a minute. Okay, so we should have been editing it from... We should have been editing it... Edited, blah, 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 blah. We should have gone into the 3D editor from uh, uh, the library manager. So that's, that's, that's the disconnect. So that might... I don't know if I'm going to put that entirely on me, but I'll put part of it on me because of that. Because see, it's updated to have the new uh, uh, silkscreen layout finally. So clicking directly on the part was the bad idea, which, you know, hey, uh, that's my fault. I shouldn't have known in a program that has this giant sidebar with these beautiful large pictures of all your stuff that I wasn't able to go in and edit it from that. You know, that's, uh, that's on me. That's a bad assumption on my part. Missiles. <laughs> what isn't updated here? Hold on. Okay, it just has like, hey, stuff changed. Footprint has been updated. Okay, thank you. Can I get rid of this now? No? All right, okay, all right, okay, that's fine. We'll work with that. All right, so let me, uh, let me flip this around. Seems reasonable. 
it's it's just like they need they need like a like a UI consultant. And you know, hey, maybe they're working on it. I hope they are. This seems like a center to me. I'm just gonna do that, flip it around, and then try to try to align that properly. It really is zero point nine five. I don't know where that math comes from, but somebody's lying about their dimensions. Oh, it's nine four. Ah. Ah. Okay, uh, move this. My voice is starting to go. Uh, move the component from here. I'm moving it this way by z negative 0 0.02 or 1. I have to like select it in order to see it at all. Ah, it needed to go a little further. I screwed up. Control Z. Huh. Wait, was it all moving as 1? That shouldn't be. I need to go negative. Yeah. Mm hmm. Hmm. You go this way. Point 0.1 I think is too much. But I, I couldn't see it. <laughs> I can't see the circle to tell. Uh, all right, negative uh, point 0.3. Oh, no, 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 point oh 0.03. Negative point oh 0.05, and eh, whatever. I'm nudging it so very little. That's fine. All right. It's it, it, if I push on the component just in the wrong way, I can slide slide a little bit within the hole that it's going to be mounted in. So that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right. That's our JST connector. I'm going to finish that. Save it. Save it, please. Please save it. What is this? What is this? I can't save it. Cannot be saved. Out of date. You motherfucker. All right, hold on. Open it up again. The footprint representation of this document has been updated with a recent footprint change. Okay, cool. Like, can you... Okay. Save it. It won't let me save it because it says it's out of date, but it doesn't let me update it. How does this work? How does this work? What am I supposed to do? Wait. What am I supposed to do? All right, you know what? I don't. I don't understand. I don't understand how to how to correct this. I'm closing this. I'm. We'll start it. We'll start it up again. You go. I don't. I don't want to see you anymore. Don't save that. Everybody, go away. Everybody, go away. Start from a new drawing, right? <laughs> I'm starting to really get angry at the software today. Usually I don't actually get angry at stuff. I just like to, to rant about things. And today I'm actually getting angry at this. Because it's like, uh, this, is, this is the simplest of things. What am I not doing? I figured out one thing I'm not doing, which was opening... I was opening this and expecting to be able to edit other stuff, which is not the case. Now, since I've messed with it and saved it, I don't know if that changes anything else, because there are references that I'm not able to edit or look at uh, in the background of the software. Um, when I go into the schematic for this board, well, first of all, I've got a symbol on there right now. So if I delete that and I, I, I bring it through to the end design, Maybe I can delete all the references to the old part and that'll be fine. So I'll save that. Go all the way to the 3D render of it and save it again. Maybe it'll get rid of this and that'll let me edit other stuff. Save that. All right, all right, all right. It's, it's, this is like a house of cards, this software. And if you use it properly, it works really well. Uh, it just seems like we... For some reason, the very simple task of associating a three-dimensional model with a uh, footprint becomes a, a, a nightmare. It becomes a very convoluted process very quickly. And really, all we're trying to do here is create a form that looks like the laser driver board that will allow me to design a 3D printed part around everything else. So I can put stuff where I want it to go, hit Control-P, 
it poops out of the printer. I put some screws in it, and it's done. Uh, <laughs> it's done. Should be done. Open library manager. That's yeah, when I select the part specifically, it always opens the wrong thing. Uh, 2018 component connector manager, rather. Open library manager. Did you not get the signal that I wanted to... Huh. Gotta find it in this list. It's not... <sighs> okay. All right. You know what? <laughs> Connector specific managed. Open in the library manager. And then it opens this. And then it's not there. Is it in use? It is. Okay, yeah. Connector specific. Edit. And then it's opening it all. All right, all right, all right. And then inexplicably, it'll come up and, and ask me to open something again, right? Yep, there it goes. See, it, it comes up and it's like, uh, what do you want? And it's like, get out of here. All right, so go to this component. Go to the 3D model. I go to edit. Simple enough. And then I get a warning. The footprint representation of the document has been updated with recent footprint changes. More info. There's nothing I can do with this message. Okay? And so I've just got a warning in the upper corner. Sketches. Silk screen. That's been updated. whoop de doo Thank you for doing that for me. But for some reason, what that means is that if I go to save this, Control S, I can't. I can't milestone it. Cannot be saved. Out of date. Why is it out of date? What? Ah, oh, the references got all messed up, didn't they? Something got something got messed up. Why are you beeping at me? Probably because I'm hyperglycemic? No. Replace sensor. CGM session has ended. It said 24 hours. You guys heard me read that out a minute ago. Hey, you got 24 hours left, and now it's like your session's over. When, when did it... What the fuck? Why did it do that? I, it must have lost signal, and then it was like, you know what? We're done. <sighs> We're done here. All right, I'm getting increasingly frustrated at this. There's some kind of a referential error with that 3D model. Now, if I, if I go back and I do all the steps over again, and this time I don't double-click on the... Because <laughs> this, is, this is where you went wrong, kiddo. This is where you messed up big time. What I did is I double-clicked on that in order to edit the orientation of the part versus the silk screen, and I think that fucked everything up because what happened was an unupdated reference ended up being a newer version, and so when this version, the one that I double-clicked on by going through the library manager, when that when it saw that, it was like, here's your silk screen from this date, and the other one's like, I'm from this date, and it's like, oh no, and then everything breaks. Um, so I probably have to delete the part and start over. That's what I'm thinking is happening right now. That basically Fusion is very particular about when things happen. And if I did something out of order and then edited something out of order, it updated and it exploded. Um, so it just, it just doesn't like things to like, oh, I can't update this with a, with an older thing. So I think that's what's going on here. I'm super frustrated. There will be more work to be done on this. Tomorrow, we'll decide what we want to work on. If I can find something cool that we can take apart, I would really appreciate that because I, I kind of need to like take it easy so I don't have a fucking stress aneurysm. Um, but uh, barring that, because I, I don't have a ton of stuff lying around right now that I can take apart. So barring that, what I would love to do is uh, either work on the audio circuit or this uh, burn the subs thing a little bit more, but we'll not get into the schematic stuff we'll do we'll do purely hardware and i'll avoid yeah you know, i'll plug two holes in that circuit board uh at some point either tonight or tomorrow and then um we'll run from there if we're working on that if i can find something to take apart i would gladly take it apart and we can see how something works sort of look at the traces look at the circuit board analyze it that way typically what we try to do on fridays although i have been stressing out and trying to get these projects done you know the eq being one of them uh, my friend Julian is waiting on one more part. We're waiting on the part from China to arrive at his place. And at that point, we will have a synthesizer to build or a, and 
uh, an FX thing. I don't know exactly what to call it, but I'm not going to tell you what the name of it is because I don't want everybody to read ahead in the textbook. You guys are notorious for doing that. So um, getting, getting a buddy in here and building something will be interesting. Uh, we'll have a lot of fun doing that. Every time Julian comes in, it's always a big event. So um, we're going to work on that. Uh, that's all I got for you guys. I'm, I'm just so incredibly frustrated with what just happened in, in Fusion. And I should do a trouble ticket on that. Um, but all they're going to do is come back at me and tell me exactly what I already know, which is that I clicked on the wrong thing, which is uh, clicking on the wrong thing as a user. Incredibly stupid that, that, that I could break it like doing that because everything I did was intuitive and natural, right? I was like, oh, that part's in the wrong orientation? Okay, let me open up the part that you saved into the project folder. And it's like, no, 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 no. Now that you've done that, we've updated the footprint and now everything is broken. It's like, so what they're gonna tell me is that the time sync of the two is off. I shouldn't have gone and edited that other program or other part because I should have done it through the library manager by right clicking and do edit 3D part. And then, all of the references would have been in the right order and it could recreate the part and allow me to save stuff properly. But instead, the way that I did it, it made my later edits newer than the update. And then that caused the, the timeline schism. And so the software thought that I can't save the new one because there's another version in existence and this is old. The one that I wanted to save is too old. Yeah, it's a bug. It's a poorly designed feature. Yes, it's absolutely any of those. But uh, I would I would have to fight an uphill battle in order to get them to admit that. Um, and I've seen posts about that kind of thing on their site. They, it needs an overhaul. It needs an overhaul. All the, all that process needs an overhaul. Because if you're able to click the wrong thing and then get the two timelines out of it, there shouldn't even be two timelines, right? This is this is a problem that's so specific that should not exist, right? It's like I create. I create this big complicated piece of clockwork in order to count seconds. And I'm like, we need to redesign the spur gear. Whereas somebody else is like, why don't we just use a, use a clock that, that like has one gear in it, right? It's like, it's like the, whole, the whole complicated convoluted process can be redesigned into something better. Uh, and we just ran into that head first. And I've done this before too. <laughs> this, is not, this is not my first rodeo with this kind of problem, which is why I'm able to identify it so quickly. Uh, is because this has happened to me before. It was under the guise of a different error. It was harder to find. Uh, it looks like they changed the way that the error messages come about. It doesn't really help. <laughs> it doesn't help me solve the problem. So yeah, that's, man, two frustrating streams in a row. That's why I want to take something something apart to take a look at how it works, because then I'm not under the gun to get something that works. But otherwise, you know, we got plenty of stuff to work on, and we're going to get to it. Um, hey, thank you guys for sticking around. I appreciate you guys... Uh, hanging out and watching me do this. Don't let this discourage you from using Fusion 360. I'm trying to get into some very advanced stuff where like every single part I has has a 3D, has a 3D model on it. Woodis saying burn me. Well, I mean, I, I freaking can't because of the stream today. Uh, this is the laser axis. This is where it goes. I don't have it up yet. <laughs> We're working on it, but people that are subbing, your name is going to be added into a database of names that will be shuffled and then burnt up to the board first. So while I appreciate the 37 months, pretty freaking awesome, that's a lot of time. Um, that name, Wudus43, now goes into, into a pool of names uh, and they will be shuffled and then added onto the board as an initial push of names going up on there. I need a shortable, shorter name. No, you don't. No, nah, man. The, the person who broke the board previously had a giant name. Yeah, this is the, this is the Lidith, Pennsylvania board. It's, uh, it'll be pretty cool. I gotta, you know, the camera angles and everything like that, I gotta work on a little bit, but um, I, I, we had to extend the Y axis. And so in doing so, because of the principle, you know, the, 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 the rules of yak shaving dictate that I am now doing a bunch of projects on this thing to try to make it work perfectly. So I'm gonna 3D print an actual cart on this thing Part of the process of printing a cart was making an, an analogous 3D model to this board. Part of getting that board done was importing the JST connector 
Part of importing the JST connector was making a part. Part of making a part was rearranging the part. Part of rearranging the part I know is a common thing that is very broken, and I broke it. And so I'm very frustrated right now. We are four and a half. Yeah, four and a half hours in. I can't keep working on this. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a hissy fit. So <laughs> going into a pool so you don't get flooded. Hey. <laughs> Excited to see how you handle edge detection on the board. That's gonna be fun. Um I'm doing it with a controller. But we'll uh we'll get there when we get there, right? Uh that's gonna be I don't know. I hope it's in a week. I because I, I really gotta I really gotta get over these problems. If uh if I can get a proper JST part in the Fusion 360, um then I could do all the the mechanical design around that thing uh, with our with our 3D model of all the parts. Um, this is the last piece that needs to go in before I can start actually designing some of the mechanics. You know, actually making solid bodies that are going to hug all of these parts and allow me to have the proper screw holes and the mounts and everything like that. Alrighty. That's what I got for today. I'm, I'm not going to stress any further. The circuit board's the last piece of this thing that we need to put together. We built this thing. We struggled with Fusion 360 for a little while. I might just make a box with holes in it to represent the circuit board. Uh, and then from there, uh, we can get to the fun part of the design. I'll print it. We'll put it together. It goes up on the board. Then we do software. Thank you guys for joining me. I will, I will see you guys tomorrow. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow, but we'll figure it out. All right. All right. See you guys later. Boink.